Good evening and welcome to the July 16th regular town council meeting. If we could have Councillor Breton please lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Latina? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rao? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Morin Bello? Here. Thank, Thank you. you. Our first item today, we have several public hearings. We will begin with the ordinance amending the Fair Rent Commission. Is there anybody who would like to speak to that ordinance only? Anybody who'd like to speak to the fair rent ordinance? Come on up, Mr. Rue. <laughs> Unfortunately, each hearing is a separate entity. On the fair rent issue, as well as on some of the others, I think the fundamental idea is sound. I, oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm always complaining about people. Still, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Uh, over the past years, a number of people and I have spoken about the advantages of join, joining some of these various commissions. And when I was chairman of the Flood Encroachment Control Board, we, I had recommended that we disband that and join it with the inland wetlands. And I think that was subsequently done. So this is a move in the right direction good, bad, or otherwise, you have to think about it, make sure you don't end up with some unintended consequences, but moving forward on that, I would support. Or, I, I, you know, you can't do too much damage. Thank you. Did I say my name? Yes, please. I didn't? <laughs> no. no, you didn't. <laughs> I figured everybody knew me. I know, George George Rue. A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. There you go. <laughs> All right, is there anybody else who'd like to speak to the fair rent ordinance? Okay, this is for the Fair Rent Commission Ordinance. Okay, the sec I'll declare that public hearing closed. The next hearing is on the ordinance amending the redevelopment agency. Is there anybody who would like to speak to this topic? Come on up, Mr. Mazzarella. <laughs> Um, Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> and, uh, this kind of applies to many of the uh, items we're talking about tonight. But for one, has these, have these documents been approved by the town attorney or reviewed by the town attorney? I see it's not signed there. And on this particular one, there's a typo in the last section of uh, 111B. <clears throat> it says uh, unexpired term in the manager of the original appointment, I believe it's supposed to say manor. So just was wondering if you're gonna approve these tonight, are you approving what we have before us or is there gonna be some additional review before you approve them? Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to the redevelopment agency ordinance? Come on up, Mr. Rue. You, you should. <laughs> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Consistent with my remarks of a few moments ago, I would suggest or I, I would basically support the effort to consolidate many of the boards and or commissions that are around town, if for no other purpose but to uh, become a bit more efficient, which I think you will, will, will happen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody else who'd like to speak for the redevelopment agency ordinance? Seeing none, I will declare that hearing closed. The next ordinance establishing a veterans commission. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Mr. Rue. <coughs> Mr. 
George Ape. No, I got to forget. I want to check my notes on this. I'm going to identify myself a little bit differently on this particular issue. And I'm doing that. Most of you may know what that identification might be. But it, it's, it's part of the thinking that is, brings me here on this particular issue. Okay. Uh, it's George A. Ruitt, 956 Cloverdale Circle. But beyond that, <coughs> I happen to be a 92.58 years old veteran of World War II, combat infantry, Bronze Star recipient. <coughs> and I'm, I'm saying this mainly because to bring my comments, which are perhaps going to be a bit random, at least into some sort of perspective. I've spent some 56 years in this town. I've spent more time in this town hall than any of you. I think I can safely say that. And, uh, and well, that's what I want to say. But in any event, my thoughts and comments on this thing are, the thought of a Veterans Commission is fine. I, I have no problem with the idea of a commission. And I think right now the veterans or the, the Memorial Day Parade, which in my judgment seems to be the primary mover on making this happen. I could be wrong, but that's my perception and that's how I see it. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's, uh, you may or may not know, I've had some mixed feelings on the Memorial Day Parade, okay? And I have mixed feelings, and I don't know whether you know that, but some, I was approached to be the marshal on the last parade, and I declined. I just couldn't bring myself to get involved in all of the father and around that was involved in remembering or memorizing those young men who died and gave their lives for, the, for their country. And I, I, find it, I, I just found it very difficult to find that, and there's not, I don't want to say anything against first responders or police or any of the other people who sometimes have dangerous jobs. But Memorial Day was conceived with the idea that it is to memorize and memorialize those men, those young men, who gave their lives. Not veterans like me who are going to die. Because I'm going to die, but I got through the war, so I'm going to be dead. But that doesn't make me special. But those young men who gave their lives, they are special. And I think you have to think a little bit in terms of if you have this commission and you want to help veterans and their families, how, which kind, what kinds of families do you want to help? My kind of a family? Probably not necessary. There may be veterans who have served in the military and who may be having some hard times and perhaps should be, should be given some support by the community. I, I think that has to be, uh, my judgment, my judgment, is that should be limited to people who have actively served in the military. And I mean actively <coughs> served, not in some uh, reserve capacity, but who have actually served in the Army and have either been in combat or been in combat zone. This is my thinking. Now, I don't know what, I'm sharing my thoughts with you, okay? And reserve persons who have <coughs> served in the military and end up in the reserves, they again are a category they have served and maybe they they should be, they should be, you know, provided with some kind of help as necessary. The, uh, the, uh, the, 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 I don't know what the, the political mix might be on that particular committee, but I would think it would be desirable to have it be very neutral. In other words, I don't think it should be all Dems, it shouldn't, there should certainly not be all Republicans, and maybe you have to have three, three, and an independent on there. And that has to maybe be a balance. Because I think dealing with veterans and those young men who have served and those young men who gave their lives and as you deal with their families, that has to be done in a very neutral way. Uh, my perception, again, was the primary focus seemed to uh, uh, set, uh, evolve around the parade. And, uh, the, uh, and, the, and the focus for Memorial Day has to be back to what it was, what it was, what its intent was, and I get a little bit concerned when I read some of the literature that comes out, and uh, I read here from the uh, some of the newspaper reports from the rare reminder. This year's theme will be to recognize Weathersfield first responders who have served their country and our community. We have other holidays that we can honor these people, and I think they should be. And veterans like myself, who managed to get through the war, if you want to celebrate something with us, 
That's why we have Veterans Day. That's why we have Armed Forces Day. So again, I, something I think you want to think about. The other thing is, in the uh, literature that I got from the town, uh, let me see if I can find it here quickly. Oh. Well, anyway, it, it, it had to do with uh, it had to do with the public address system and soliciting people to march in a parade, and and, and 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 had a lot to do with people getting involved in it. And I think the purpose for Memorial Day got kind of lost in the process. Okay, so those are my those are my general thoughts on this particular subject. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anybody else who would like to speak on the ordinance? Um, Establishing a Veterans Commission. Anybody else? Okay, I will declare that or that public hearing closed. The next public hearing is on the ordinance combining culture and the arts and tourism commission and creating the Weathersfield Heritage Commission. Is there anybody in the audience who would like to speak on that ordinance? Come on up, Chris. <coughs> Good evening. Chris Trazic, 125 Cedar Street in Wethersfield. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently the chairman of the Wethersfield Tourism Commission, and I apologize. I sent an email late last week um, with some specifics about uh, the proposed changes to the ordinance. First of all, um, I applaud the council for considering this. This is part of the Wethersfield master plan that was created with a grant from the National Trust for Historic Preservation to create a historic uh, commission instead of a tourism commission. Um, that said, there are just a couple of minor points. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to go through each did, of them. Did you see that we have made amendments? Are the amendments on the table? Is that what the, those amendments Some of are? them are. Some of them are. Based, okay. on, uh, based on the informational meeting that yes. we had? Yes. yes. Um, it's more in terms of the actual membership, just a couple of suggestions. Sure. Um, Executive Director um, of the Weathersfield Historical Society and the Webb Dean Stevens Museum, you might want to consider adding or other representative of those two organizations just because they may not be able to serve in that capacity. Um, the Weathersfield Shopkeepers Association may or may not continue to be in existence, just something to think about. Um, <clears throat> There is no representative from the arts and culture community, which would be nice to have included as part of the membership. Um, you have as a number 11, a representative of the town government staff. Um, usually don't have a member of the staff actually serving on the commission. Um, currently the tourism commission has a, has a staff member um, who is working with the commission but does not serve on the commission itself. Um, and then whether you want to think about having alternatives so you can make sure you have a quorum. Um, and those are really um, the only changes that I have. Uh, and I sent an email with a lot more detail. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate your feedback. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this? Mr. Mazzarella, come on up. Mazzarella, 600 Walker Hill Road. <clears throat> I'm all for the combining of these committees, but I have a problem with uh, B2, particularly when we're referring to Old Weathersfield. I think this committee should apply to the entire community of Weathersfield. Uh, while it's true, there is a vast amount of uh, historical uh, structures and culture in Old Weathersfield. Uh, it's not the entire town. We have old sections of, uh, of town. We have old structures and historic buildings and homes. Uh, we have uh, Griswoldville section. We have, uh, you know, early hydro uh, with mills and so forth that were up in the Griswoldville uh, area. Uh, Old homes in, in uh, on Walcott Hill Road at Jordan Lane that extend outside the uh, quote old Weathersfield, and I'd like to see everything combined as one. We're all in this together, and I think uh, some of the residents 
on the uh, west side of the track should have the same amount of input and benefit as uh, those on the east side of the railroad tracks. So I'd uh, ask that you consider deleting the word old and just call it Weathersfield. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Anybody else? Okay, seeing no one, I will close this public hearing. Moving on to the Solomon Wells House, uh, merging the Solomon Wells House Committee with the Advisory Rec and Park Board and changing the name of the board. Is there anybody who would like to speak to this ordinance? Mr. Rue. Hope you've got your Fitbit on today. Your Fitbit, to count your steps. <laughs> whatever. Somebody told me they couldn't hear me before. I don't know whether the mic was turned off or turned down or whatever, and I don't like not being heard, you know. But people don't always listen, and that's sometimes the problem I have even in this council chamber. You know, you can hear me, but you don't listen. Uh, on this issue under control, consistent with my other remarks, I think the whole idea of combining some of these commissions is sound as long as you give careful thought to the wording and make certain make certain that whatever rules you in, in, in install in running these things, that the right of the citizenry to speak is well protected. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Anybody else like to speak on this ordinance? Okay. This is the Solomon Wells Advi and, uh, House Committee Advisory Rec and Park Board. Mr. Mazzarella. <clears throat> Thank you. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I lost my place there. Uh, just a couple typos that I saw. Maybe somebody could review them before you approve these changes. On uh, the first line of 10-61, I believe you're supposed to strike out the word and advisory and also the word and so that it reads there shall there shall be a recreation and parks board. And on the second page, uh Mr. Mazzarella, where was that specifically? Right under uh ten dash sixty one creation membership and terms. Yep. The first line. Will be in, it says an advisory recreation, recreation is struck out, but not an advisory. Okay. And then the word and, and then you have to add a parks. And on B, <clears throat> the last line uh, just above purpose, said uh, the last word should be changed from matter to manner, I believe. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Anybody else? Seeing none, I'll declare this hearing closed. Moving on to the ordinance combining Inland Wetlands and Watercourses Commission and the Conservation Commission. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this ordinance? Mr. Rue. reminded to tell everybody who I am, George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Again, consistent with my previous comments, I think the combining of these various activities with the view, and I have to presume that your objective is to become more efficient in the running of our local government. I hope that's the objective, and I hope that we will make, that the, the effects of that will be materialized, and we will, as citizens and taxpayers, notice that somewhere along the line. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Anybody else? Okay. Seeing none, declare this public hearing closed. The next ordinance is combining the Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities and the Human Rights and Relations Committee. Is there anybody who'd like to speak on this? Oh, we got Barbara will come up first. My name is Barbara Rue. I live at 79 Main Street. 
I have served on the Human Rights and Opportunities Commission since approximately 1984. Sometimes we meet, sometimes we don't meet. But we are a commission. We are not a committee. Commissions have to be formally, they have to have formal meetings, you have to have, have minutes and so forth. I've always felt, I've been concerned that the commission doesn't meet regularly, but my theory is that we need to have this existing within our code so that should an issue arise, there would be a public forum to address an issue. What I think should happen is the underlying, the current underlying part of the code should be amended so that we don't have to have six meetings a year. Um, the commission, Committee on Persons with Disabilities is a committee. And in, on some level, it would be logical to merge these, but on a, on a practical level, it would not be, because the Committee on Persons with Disabilities is extraordinarily active. They do a wide variety of things that the human rights and relations people wouldn't be doing. So I, I think it's, it's not a good idea. And it's not like, as far as I know, the Committee Commission on Human Rights and Relations doesn't cost any money. We used to have $100. We do not have that and have not had that for a number of years. The primary handy, the primary reason that we haven't met, I've been told, is because there is no staff person available to, to attend the meetings. When Ray Ann Palmer was the assistant town attorney, she consistently came to meetings and was extremely helpful. So I would propose that there not be a merger of this commission and this committee. I think we should look at the commission statute, the commission part of the code, and maybe fix that. The other thing I'd like to point out is there was a running joke in old Weathersfield. For many years, there was no liquor license. Couldn't get a liquor license. But except one year, in the summertime, suddenly Steve Kelly got a liquor license because nobody was home. If you want to do something in Weathersfield where you don't want people to notice, do it when people are on vacation in the summer. I think that if this is a re this should have been done at a time of the year where there were more people around who might have had an interest in it. It looks kind of sneaky. So those would be my th those would be my thoughts. And I I know there are a variety of other people here to speak on the issue, um, and I would hope you would listen to them. Thank you. Okay, come on up. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm, I'm Joan Haynes from 516 Highland Street, and I've been a resident for 51 years, and first time I've come to speak to the town council. <laughs> but You're I'm welcome. here as chairperson of the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities. And I just want Lee, who just came in, Lee Sikas, came all the way from First Church Village on this hot evening just to, just to come and uh, be a representative of our committee and, and Natalie and Jocelyn. And uh, I just want to say that I have been on the committee for 36 years, so that says I'm pretty old. And uh, I maybe some of you know him, but I'm the one that was appointed by uh, Tom Lasher. And those of you that are younger and don't know Tom, his plaque is hanging in the uh, entrance way as we come into the town hall. And uh, he started this in 1976 and when he was diagnosed with ALS. Now he lived the form of ALS he had, he lived 18 years. But he lived uh, paralyzed and he lived on a ventilator. He would come to the meetings. We'd have a two hour meeting. I'll never forget and I've served on a lot of committees in the past. And he'd come in his cape in the winter with his nurse and the ventilator, and we never left before two hours. I mean, absolutely. And we finally got him to stop meeting in August. That was the only time we didn't meet. And he was just, uh, his vision was to make the town of Wethersfield accessible and welcoming to people with disabilities. And back in 1976, this was not, you know, we were, we were the first, and we won many national awards because of him, he had many, he went to Washington, he had many meetings in his kitchen on Clark Ridge Road with the governor and everybody else. So he was such an advocate for the disabled that I, uh, we have kept it going over the years and we certainly, he had did, really did everything from curb cuts to making schools accessible to having a therapeutic recreation, which is, which is wonderful in town. And um, uh, transportation and anything in Lasher Court that's named after him. 
So I think that those of us who serve on this committee really feel, feel that we need to keep it going with his vision. And we are probably going to do, he has made it accessible and hopefully everybody feels welcome. We are a forum for those people in town if they want to find out anything or a resource or to, to say something that's not going well for them. But anyhow, we, we have um, really uh, tried to think of what we could do. We have some money allocated in the past and I think at this point we have a new mission of which we would like to give out small grants to people that are disabled in town that may just have something that insurance doesn't cover, probably under $200 for special ed teachers. We have given a few. They have something they would like for their room. For Natalie and her therapeutic recreation program, there's maybe some items that she needs. So I think we envision it a little different, and but I want to be making sure that, um, you know, and I don't, I don't think we go along, you know, or fit in with the other committee, and I, they are commission at least, and they should uh, be separate. And uh, at the bottom of Tom's plaque, it says, he made a difference, and I hope we still can make a difference in town. Uh, and I, that's why I'm here to, to really say that we really would like to be our separate committee. That's been all these years, and and I still have the vision of Tom with his ability to, to pull us together. The committee was half professionals and or school people or health professionals and the other half were disabled. So hopefully we will still be able to uh, uh, continue on in, in his vision. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate your comments. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Maria? <clears throat> Can you all hear me? Okay. If not, I'll speak louder. I have no difficulty with that. Hi, my name is Maria Alfonso. I live at 256 Brimfield Road in Wethersfield. I'm on the same commission as Ms. Barbara Rue, and a few points I'd like to make. First, I support the comments made by Ms. Rue um, that we should keep the two commissions separate. Uh, I agree that there should be some effort to diminish or change the number of meetings that are required for that commission. Um, I also support the comments that were written, comments I believe submitted by Deborah Cohen, who's also on the commission as well. Um, she asked if they could be read into the record. I can do that uh, shortly. Um, I have them on my iPhone. I didn't have a chance to print them out, but I believe she sent it via email to each yeah, member. Of the yes, and the town clerk has them. Okay, all right. So. Um, there's that. Um, before I do that, just want to make a couple of points of my own. Uh, the focus of both the commission and the committee are different, and to combine them would be diminishing what each one does. I also, thank you, um, am concerned as someone who has a civil rights background that to s merge the two commission and the committee, you're diminishing the legacy and the hard work that's gone into multiple years vis-a-vis -vis the committee who deals with very specific and unique needs to people with disabilities, whether they're physical or mental. And my concern is if you merge both, the focus of the things that they do will be low man or low woman or low person on the totem pole in terms of priority. Um, because unfortunately, when people talk about civil rights, they don't always give the equal weight uh, to the needs of the disabled, whether it's physical disability or mental disability or both and I'm sensitive to that as well. Uh, so those are just my concerns and why I'm opposed to the notion of combining the committee and the commission. And I support the comments made previously by Ms. Rue and also the written comments by Deborah Cohen, who's also on the same commission as I am. All I'm trying to do is get my notes here. Is it all right if I read it into the record? Yeah, you can, yes, you, uh, yes, okay. that's fine. All right. Thank you. All right, bear with my nearsightedness. My name is Deborah Cohen. I reside at 73 Church Street. I was named to the Human Rights and Relations Commission one year ago. At that time, I wrote a letter of introduction to other members of the HRRC asking for a brief history of the commission and a statement of its vision for moving forward. I learned that the HRRC had not met in at least three years previous 
to my being named as a member. It is my understanding that the town now wishes to combine the HRRC with the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for persons with disabilities. Obviously, it's people with disabilities. After meeting with Matt, Matthew Forrest earlier this summer and giving this matter serious consideration, I must ex express my opposition to this plan. My reasons are the following. One, the WACPD has a necessarily specific target of concerns. Our disabled residents deserve full attention of that committee. They meet approximately eight times annually. This indicates to me that they have a full plate of concerns. Second, as the HRRC has not met in many years, I believe it is time to redefine the purpose and scope of that body. In my meeting with Matthew Forrest, I shared my view that the HRRC should be a proactive group, bring cultural and educational events to Weathersfield that will broaden an understanding and appreciation of diversity and community. While this would most certainly include the interests of our disabled neighbors, the focus goes far beyond that specific group. We have the opportunity to address issues such as immigration, poverty, human trafficking, which most definitely touches our community, inclusion of our minority neighbors in town politics and decision making, employment and educational opportunities, LBGTQ interests, and so much more. I envision a creative and energetic HRRC that would bring awareness and interest to our residents on topics that reach far beyond the scope of the WACPD. In April of this year, Weathersfield Women for Progress joined me in co-sponsoring an immigration forum at the Pitkin Community Center. Attended by more than 60 people, the forum hosted immigration attorneys, a Connecticut religious leader who was responsible for spearheading the sanctuary effort in houses of worship across the state, as well as DACA recipients who shared their experiences. How proud I would have been had one of the co-sponsors of that event had been our very own HRC. It was a missed opportunity and an example of what I believe is possible in the future. Prior to my meeting with Matthew Forrest, I met with then town manager Jeff Bridges to investigate the reasons for the HRC having been dormant for so long. Part of, this, part of his explanation was that every Weathersfield commission and committee must have a paid town employee to act as a liaison and that funds for such a liaison to the HRC were not available. It was at the end of that meeting after I pressed the issue that Mr. Bridges conceded we couldn't indeed meet without a paid liaison but must be sure to meet all legal requirements of the town such as filing notice of meetings, taking notes, etc. I assure all members of town council that residents who are willing to serve on committees and commissions are fully capable of filling those requirements. In essence, there is no financial need that requires the disbanding of the HRRC. I have the utmost respect for the WACPD. My opposition to combining the HRRC with them is based on the very different needs for each, respectfully asking that town committee members embrace a vision of what a reinvented and re-energized HRRC might accomplish. I stand in opposition to this merger. Thank you for thank your you comments much. and thank you for reading uh, Deborah Cohen's comments. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this ordinance? Come on up, Jocelyn. Uh, my name is Jocelyn Valenti and I'm, I live at 55 Old Common in Weathersfield. I am the co-chair of the Weathersfield Advisory Committee for Persons with Disabilities. On May 16th at our regular monthly meeting, our committee, um, council liaison Jody Latina told us of these pending plans for a merger and said our committee would possibly be joined with the Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, the Human Rights Commission, and we discussed this and it was the decision of the committee that we wanted to stay independent. Councilor Latina suggested that we write a letter to the Rules and Procedure Chair Matt Forrest and express our concerns. We drafted a letter and I personally attended the June 5th meeting for rules and procedures, and Mr. Forrest said that our committee would only be joined with Human Rights Commission, and the SCAC, Senior Citizen Advisory Committee, would stay independent. I brought that information back to our committee on our June 20th meeting. During this meeting, we were made aware of the new ordinance combining the Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities and the Human Rights Commission. In reviewing the new four-page ordinance, it describes a new commission that details the membership creation, vacancies, term limits, pur purpose, powers, duties, compensation, that shows the primary focus is on the human rights aspect and tax on the disability aspect almost as an afterthought. 
On Friday, I received an updated version of this new ordinance, and it is still vague in exactly how the nine members and two alternates of the new commission will be selected out of nine members and three alternates from the present human rights group and the nine members of our person with disability group. The town has said the objectives in combining many committees and commissions was to save the town money and also reduce the amount of meetings that the council members need to attend. The town does not subsidize our committee. The town does not pay for a recording secretary for our group. I actually take the minutes at no charge. As far as our council liaison, Jody Latina, is concerned, we welcome her attendance whenever her schedule permits. But since she has no voting rights, we rely on her for advice solely. She is available to us via email if we have any questions. And we provide her with copies of our minutes so that she may share with the council any information she feels is necessary. Now, before going any further, please be aware that the uh, Weathersfield Advisory Committee with persons with disability has been working diligently for about 40 years. We have about eight monthly meetings and hold three joint events with the Therapeutic Recreation Division every year. A picnic in July, which they had last week, the Thanksgiving dinner, and a holiday party for the town's disabled residents, including the group homes located in Wethersfield. We also invite the council members to attend. The Human Rights Commission has not met in about eight years, according to one of the members I spoke with over this weekend. I have personally talked with half of the Human Rights Commission members, and they are in all agreement in keeping the group separate. Deborah Cohen shared, me, shared with me her ideas for resurrecting this commission, and she agrees that joining the groups will not be beneficial, as the visions of the two groups go entirely in different directions. We also discussed how each group may help the other in the future and vowed to work together if needed on any specific issue. Our committee provides a forum to discuss issues and opportunities. Our goal is to utilize allocated funds for a grant program to help the needs of the disabled community. We have provided armed seating at the community center and we have donated to Mikey's Place to promote inclusion and accessibility. We want to stay as a committee independent of the Human Rights Commission. We would respectfully request that the council take no action this evening on this proposed new ordinance. I would also like to request that the members of our committee that need to be reconfirmed to a new term limit be afforded that vote. Our next meeting will be on September 19th, 2018, 7 p.m. in the town manager's conference room, and we invite any and all council members to meet with us directly if they have any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this ordinance? Come on up, Mr. Sikas. Dolores. Lee Seekers, uh, 117 Wells Road. As much as uh, people want to remain themselves, I'm in agreement with that. But we have to admit, plain and simply, uh, taking the elderly and the disabled with the dollar service, or a legal matter with the civil rights and, and uh, disabled issues, uh, there is some interaction that takes place. If anything, remain separate but perhaps uh, a liaison to each other, from each other, a couple times a year, not every meeting, but a couple times a year, just so we could make our strength stronger and more united. That's all, basically. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance? Mr. Mazzarella. Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. So from listening to the speakers tonight, it seems apparent that uh, both the committee and the commission have no interest in joining uh, ranks. They each have their separate mission and they would prefer to 
continue along the same path they have been. So I'm trying to understand the purpose. And uh, as one of the prior speakers said, I thought the purpose was to uh, reduce the number of boards and commissions and uh, save some money. Uh, I don't see where any of that's going to happen with this plan. As a matter of fact, there seems to be a lot of, of uh, requirements that have been put into place for the Human Rights and Relations Commission. Uh, a lot of things are cast in stone now where evidently they haven't even been active unless uh, such a situation should arise. Uh, one of the things that caught my attention, it's the only one of these items we're discussing tonight well, where they want to have funds made available. And I'm questioning whether there are already funds set aside in the budget that's been passed. Is, is there money available for funding this new commission, revised commission, if you will? Uh, so I really don't see any reason in, in uh, moving forward with this proposal and uh, let the gracious volunteers that put all their hard work and effort into these uh, two separate organizations continue along the path that they, they are now. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak towards this ordinance? Anybody else? Seeing no one, I will declare this public hearing closed. Um, the final ordinance is amending Chapter A-180 Town Council Rules of Procedures. Is there anybody who would like to speak on this ordinance? Mr. Mazzarella? Uh, Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. <clears throat> so I kind of get the idea behind this where you want to have more of a workshop situation once a month. But uh, to my way of thinking, the word workshop means everybody's going to kind of work together towards a, coming up with a solution or a goal. And uh, I'd like to think that public comments an important part of the town council. Uh, I like to think somebody listens. Maybe not, but nevertheless, I'd like to be able to come up here and speak my piece. <clears throat> and when we get to the regular workshop meetings, you'll see that uh, the public speaking portion of the meeting at the beginning has been deleted. And uh, those of us in the audience would sit in attendance and listen to all the back and forth in the workshop, questions and answers, hopefully. We get to hear what you say. And then when everybody's done talking, we get to make a comment. But by that point, you've already decided what the action's going to be. And you're just going to push it off until the next meeting and then have a formal presentation and a vote. Um, I don't think that, that does anything. It doesn't do anything for me, let's put it that way. And I would ask that you would consider a format more similar to the uh, town planning and zoning meetings. I don't know if you've ever attended one of them. They have a little bit of a different situation where an applicant is uh, allowed to present his case, or in this case, maybe a counselor would be able to present their thought or their motion. And uh, there's a lot of back and forth between uh, the Planning and Zoning Commissioners and the applicant. A lot of questions are thrown out, back and forth, answered. The public gets to listen to all this. And then the uh, chairperson asks for public comment. The public gets to come up and, and ask more questions or ask for clarification of something that was said. And uh, this goes back and forth. Uh, several people make comment. Uh, then they ask the applicant to come back, and they fire away some more questions and answers. And when they feel that everything's been satisfied, 
they again ask the public, would you like to uh, comment? And we have an opportunity to weigh in again. Then they close the meeting and decide which way they're going to go. But that's more of a, my term, my idea of what a workshop would be like, where you would have some back and forth communication. And uh, I would just uh, hope that you would consider uh, allowing the public to weigh in uh, at the workshop meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mazzarella. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Come on up, Mr. Rue. George, <clears throat> George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. This is a very, very different problem. As all of you know, I think you should, because I've spoken to it many a time, this ability for the citizen to participate in their government is extremely important to me. And my introductory comments about who George Rue was, was fired and started as a result of that experience many, many years ago, before any of you were even blinks in your father's eyes. I think my, I think Miss, my daughter here, Barbara, she commented about summertime activity. My gut reaction when I, somebody tipped me off that all of this was happening, because I'm pretty old, as you know, sometimes I'm tired at night, and I fall asleep in front of the TV, but I was really motivated to come here tonight. But I can be motivated to come every meeting with a little bit of incentive. Uh, it seems as though all these many, many important activities are safe for the summer when everybody's away. That was the way big spend money spending things will always seem to be handled. Now this is a very important item for the citizen to be able to participate in his or her government. And this whole agenda, when I first saw it, I didn't even know who the chairpersons were. All I kept seeing was Matt Forrest's name on, on every one, and I finally found the little notice that, that Kathy sent out and listed the committee. So I was thinking to myself, God, it sounds like King Forrest has got this thing going. What's, what's motivating him to do all of this? So in any event, I finally did find out what was happening. But it seemed to me there was an awful lot going on. The thing that I did notice and I highlighted it, was on the bottom of Kathy's letter, to review the, the, and discussion of possible changes. Possible, possible, possible. Some of them, in my opinion, are, should be virtually impossible. If this committee and this council, with both parties, and I'm not too sure where some of the parties here stand in re relative to citizens' rights, from what I see happening in Washington, there's a large segment down there, they don't give a damn what we citizens think. And that worries me no end. Uh, the, uh, I've got a few notes here that I just want to touch on. And uh, I did a little editing, but I would counsel that you edit it very carefully. And make sure that as you edit, you think in terms of what are these, what are these annoying citizens like Bob Young and Tom and, and, and Tony, uh, yeah, Tony and myself, what are they, how are they going to react to this? Because they can stir up, and we can stir up a lot of fuss in the town with a little bit of effort. So I think I just think about some of these things. The things, uh, one of the points that I, uh, that Tom mentioned, and I picked up on the same thing. This, 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 uh, this uh, meeting that you're having, this, this uh, I forget what you call it, the hearing. You know, we can speak at the end when everything's all decided, okay? And what worried me, again, in the hearing and the town council, did I understand, and maybe I'm kind of simple, I, I don't understand that. I'm not as sophisticated as all you people. You know? But are we going to have one council meeting a month and one hearing meeting a month? And are we going to have fewer council meetings? Is this, is this part of the agenda? Is that the plan? You don't know? Come on. We'll discuss it all when we get to the to the um, council action, but this is well, your this chance. This becomes a problem to... in communicating with the I community know. at large. Mm -hmm. So, in other words, it, the reluctance to comment on that tells me, simple folk that I am, yeah, you're damn right. That's what you're planning to do. No, we'll still have our two meetings, but at the during right, right now during right. public you, hearing, we'll it it's your we'll time let it go. to we'll speak. Let it go. We'll let it go. We'll save it for later. Uh, the uh, the the other thing that really offended me. 
and this offends me again and again and again. Many people come to this podium, they're not as brash as I am, they're, not as a, they're more afraid of you, they're intimidated easily, like Mr. Putin seems to have done for our great leader in Washington. And I don't buy into this kind of stuff. So uh, I think when I saw about a timing device and where you're going to not let people speak a little and get some of the stuff off their mind. And I can be sensitive to the fact when you've got 50, 60 people here who want to speak, yeah, you've got to have a few rules. But if there's two or three people speaking and you just arbitrarily, bang, five minutes, sit down, Mr. Rue, I don't think it's wise, I don't think it's good, and it sends a bad message to we, the citizens. So uh, the uh, one time, five minutes I've touched on, one time, five minutes, public comments, the hearing, uh, that, and that comment at the end when it should be done, uh, when you have no more opportunity to provide input to to what the citizenry were like. And I think that's what motivates many citizens to come to the community to share with our elected leaders. And none of you are that much smarter than the rest of us out here. As a matter of fact, maybe you'd learn a lot by listening more. And I'm angry, you can tell that, and that's exactly what I have in mind. So in any event, the, uh, I, I think I've shared, I've shared this, I'm concerned about it, I don't like it, and uh, the last item, well, I got a couple of quickies here. The last paragraph on page A on this was page 20 on page 40. They were duplicate pages in there. I don't know why they were in there twice. Now, I'm going to read one sentence, and, you know, I didn't, couldn't understand what it meant. Unless otherwise determined by council, the only vote for final action on an item on the regular workshop agenda will be that end the review of an item and not recommend it for further action or review by the town council. I don't see any punctuation in there, and some of the words kind of, kind of garbled to me. So I, I'd suggest you take a little bit of a look at that. The, uh, the other thing, I'd, initially I was planning to come to some council meetings recently and express some of my concerns about what's happening in our country generally. And I decided I wasn't going to do that. But I was reading in the paper just today, yesterday's paper, and the first thing that jumped out at me was the town council came to mind. And it was an article about our leader in Washington. And I'll just read one paragraph. The document says that Russia and China are determined to make economies less free and less fair to grow their militaries and to control information and data to repress their societies and explain, expand their influence. Depress and repress their societies. And the way I look at this, I'm sorry to say, is when, when we as citizens are leaned on and can't speak our mind, I find that kind of offensive. And I feel very proud of my country. I've done my duty to my country. And my country's been very good to me. And you can look at the watch. Am I I'm probably over, but thank you for letting it go. We're going to let it go. So anyway, that's where I stand. And I would leave one short thought with you. This happens to be a short brief from John, by John Adams. It was written in 1774. And I have this file of stuff that's called Famous Patriotic Sayings and Quotes and Words of Wisdom. The most sensible and jealous people are so little attentive to government that there are no instances of resistance until repeated multiplied oppressions have placed it beyond a doubt that their rulers had formed settled plans to deprive them of their liberties, not to oppress an individual or a few, but to break down the fences of a constitution and deprive people at large of all share in their government and all checks by which it is limited. So I believe that the opportunity here is something that's so fundamental to my thinking and I think to the thinking of many. And I hope that you hear some of this. And we'll have to see how things go on in the future. And I do thank you for your patience. And I know I went over, but the world didn't end, not did it. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak on this ordinance, Mr. Young? Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. At the last town council meeting, which was probably a month ago, uh, you talked about eliminating the last town council meeting, the one the first week of July. 
<clears throat> because everybody was on vacation. And then, now this comes up, something extremely important, very offensive to the citizens on this particular issue. And you popped it up like Barbara Rue said, midsummer. Slide it through. I never heard the joke she mentioned, but it's a joke on you guys. I'm very concerned, and, and it's amazing how when I read through the agenda and I kept seeing Mr. Forrest's name popping up, Mr. Forrest, who I have been making comments about over time, and then I saw where he wants to eliminate one of our public comment sections of our meeting. Matter of fact, he wants to eliminate the other one as well. Because I look at it from the point of view that I've criticized him in the past. And he is going to take this as a personal vendetta against the entire town of Wethersfield. His name is on there. His name was on, and he went on board 10, 12 years ago with the Wethersfield Historic Society lease that now has cost us thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost money. And that's what I've been complaining about regarding him. That's one of the things. And by, by him bringing this forward to eliminate public from commenting, I take that personally. And I believe he's taking it pretty personally, too, against everybody. And I think he should step down. And when the time comes to vote on this particular item, you should recluse yourself from the vote. Also, Mayor Bello, I've commented more than once regarding you and that lease, the lease that should have been renewed with the Wethersfield Historic Society. Instead of us getting $100 a year, rent, and paying for all the expenses that are associated with that building, the Standish House, the Kinney Center. Mr. Young, this is just on the ordinance for rules and procedures well, right now. I am on it. And I'm letting you know that okay. I think you should, yourself should recluse yourself too from the vote on this because I have personally discussed with you from the podium and now you are going to be voting on the issue of eliminating public comment. And I take this extremely personal. I come down here we, meeting after meeting. I'm not, as, not here as much as George Rue, but I do come a lot. And I do speak. And I don't believe it's all nonsense. I think it's all dollars and cents. Dollars and cents that you folks don't even listen to. And it's amazing how sensitive you are to bring this issue up in the middle of summer to eliminate and change the rules of public speaking. How many times I raise those issues and, and now, now, now you're going to be voting on this. I believe the conflict of interest is extremely strong for Mr. Forrest to recluse yourself on this vote and the same with you, Mayor. You should as well. You know, uh, I could go through all of this section, but I don't think it's that important. I think what's important is you two should not be voting on this issue. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight on this ordinance? Anybody else who'd like to speak? Okay, seeing no one, we will close this public hearing. Next, we will move into public comment. Members of the public may speak on any issue uh, for five minutes. Is there anybody from the public who would like to speak tonight on any issue? Mr. Colantonio. I guess, uh, uh, good evening, Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Can everybody hear me? You can, okay. I can hear you. Can you, hear you, Gus. you cannot? 
Okay, and I guess, uh, yeah, my voice, it's kind of soft, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's bad, but, but anyway, I've been, uh, I've been coming right here now for the past 10 years. I've been complaining about a stop sign for many years. And over the years that I complained, the only counselor that asked me to say, should, should I bring it up? and discuss it. And I said, that was uh, Jody Latina. And I said to myself, says, no, I don't think we need to because it's so clear cut. I mean, I don't really, you don't even have to discuss it. It's, 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 it's normal. But I guess it wasn't. 10 years later, I'm still here. And let me say it again, what I've said more than once. I know most of the people are not listening, but that's okay, I'm used to it. I'm going to start again. I've been asking for a stop sign on Morrison Avenue for about 10 years now. Nothing yet. The reasons I received from the town are there are too many stop signs in town. And number two, existing traffic does not warrant a stop sign on Morrison Avenue. That's what they've told me. I have pointed out on numerous occasions that Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean Highway before 1955. It was a residential street with no true traffic, obviously, from Walker Hill Road. It never connected to Silas Dean, so you could not have true traffic. I've also pointed out and compared the existing condition on Morrison Avenue and Hillcrest Avenue. Why? They are adjacent to each other and they are connected by orchard. Now, let me compare again. Morrison Avenue is 24 feet wide. Hillcrest Avenue is 30 feet wide. Morrison Avenue has a three foot grass strip. Hillcrest Avenue has a 15 foot grass strip. Morrison Avenue has an average of, uh, of 730 cars on a daily basis. 730 cars, 24 foot wide. And in certain places, it's less than 24 feet. Hillcrest Avenue has an average daily traffic of 365 cars. Have you ever asked yourself why? Anybody at all? They connected Walker Hill to Silas Dean, both of them. They are parallel, no more than four or 500 feet apart. Yet, we have 730 cars and... Uh, Hillcrest Avenue is half of it. The distance from the curb to the front of the house is approximately 38 feet. Only 38 feet on Morrison Avenue. The distance from the curb to the front of the house is approximately 60 feet on Hillcrest Avenue. You know what, what it does on the, on the noise level? The noise level which is equal to, to the inverse of the, the distance square. It's a lot. And it's very noisy, especially in the summertime when the windows are open and I'm watching TV and every time a car goes by, I cannot even understand what's going on. And yet, you guys have not done anything. Another thing too that I found out today, I went to the town. The existing right of way on Hillcrest Avenue, it's 80 feet wide. That means the town owns 80 feet there. On Morrison Avenue, it's only 50. The distance between the houses on Hillcrest Avenue is 160 feet. On Morrison Avenue, it's about 100, uh, 100 feet. Can you imagine that? Something wrong, right? The town has taken measurements for the intersection side distance for Orchard at Hillcrest Avenue and found to be 344 feet to the east and 970 feet to the west. Guys, with these kinds of dimensions, you do not need stop signs on Hillcrest Avenue. But I'm not suggesting to remove it. I'm just suggesting that I need it on Morrison Avenue 1. The town has also taken measurements for the intersectional side distance for Orchard at Morrison Avenue and found to be 290 feet. 290 feet, the, report, the police report says that you need a stop sign. 290 feet. The town has also taken a measurement from uh, Tifton, looking west on Morrison Avenue, it's 232 feet. Now I asked before and I'm gonna ask her again. 
if you need a stop sign because you can only see 290 feet going uphill, wouldn't you need a stop sign if you can only see 232 feet going downhill? And yet, it's been 10 years and nobody's done anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Is there anybody else who would like to speak during public session? Come on up, sir. Uh, my name is James Culpa. I live at 239 Crest Street. Oh, sorry. So, James Culpa, 239 Crest Street. Apologize for being late, but the ordinances as proposed on the table, so those are what could potentially be voted on tonight, correct? Okay. And then schedule-wise, should you vote and approve them tonight, when would the effective date of the ordinance be? Do you guys know? Or? Sure. Those the um, We don't usually do a back and forth during public comment, okay. but I'll answer your questions quickly. Um, the I believe the ordinances on the table are the ones that the hearings were set for and are not the ones with the amendments made. Um, Dolores, is that true? Mm -hmm. Yes. So we have amendments at our place here um, that we will make during our part portion of the meeting. Okay. And the second is um, once the ordinance is voted and approved, it, um, it go. It has to be uh, advertised, and then we have ten days after the it's advertised. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. makes sense. Yeah, and I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Is there anybody else who would like to speak tonight, Mr. Young? Good evening again, Robert Young, twenty Copper Mill Road. Um, go, just going back to that, uh, the, the uh, rules of procedures amendment on the town council for speaking. All I'd like to say is, as Mr. Rue said, uh, the elimination of the current, just as, I'm not saying he said exactly that, but the elimination of the current public comment section is not for the public good. It's for the political good. And I think you have a serious problem when you put your politics ahead of all the rest of the people in town. And that's exactly what you have done with this particular issue. And, uh, oh, I'm, you want me to start over again, George? Okay. All right, and then next. Tonight you have on your agenda, um, I guess it's uh, on your agenda to, to, to purchase another dump truck, $153,000 dump truck. Don't we have enough dump trucks? I've gone down to the, down to, uh, the garage down there and I see, I see so much equipment down there. I mean, there's, there's more equipment down there than people to drive those pieces of equipment. And we keep borrowing. It's all borrowed money. Are you paying cash for it, Mr. Forrest? For this dump truck, no, you're going to go put another, another, another on your credit card that will now become a fixed cost for our budget and something that we will never talk about, but we will be told we have to pay for it. This is the way you folks operate. I think you should cancel this dump truck. Next, in the Hartford Current. There's all these uh, articles coming out now regarding the, uh, the political people who are running for office. And, and, and when I read these things, I try to avoid reading, going to the bottom to see who wrote it. And there was one out there, a letter to the editor for Tony Guerrera of Rocky Hill, who's part of uh, the Weathersfield contingent up at the state capitol. And as I read through it, and I, I just couldn't believe the great things that he's done for us up there because we're in such a big mess. We're financially broke because of people like Tony Guerrero. And then I get to the bottom of it, and I see Russ Morin is the one who sent, sent this letter to the editor then. Then another, Hartford, another public comment uh, or letter to the editor in, in a similar newspaper weeks later um, Another letter regarding 
uh, Tony Guerrero, talking about the great things he's done. Nobody talks about the tolls that he wants to put on all of us. Tolls that he's been talking about for 20 years or 10 years or I don't know how many years, but he's after the working people. People who drive on these highways every day to go back and forth to work are going to get hammered to, to, to smithereens by tolls. And Tony Guerrera, who in, runs in the, the contingent here in Wethersfield, people should really think about him. He's a bad person for, for bringing tolls to Connecticut. It's a crooked operation that's going to happen once they do get the tolls in. I'm not going to go into how it's going to work, but I've heard how it's going to work, and I know how it's going to work. We're going to pay very dearly. Then, of course, another person, <coughs> right, uh, well, yeah, in this other newspaper, a, a Carol Anest from Newington, another town council member, she writes glorious things about Tony Guerrera and how he recovered for their town $1.5 million in money because they had an oil spill over there due to incompetence of their employees and their management. And it cost us, the state taxpayers, a one and a half million dollars. I bet Carol and Nest also voted back a couple of years ago when we needed $10 million to finish our high school. I bet you she voted for that one as well in a wash each other's hands. And they write stories about how great they are. They're garbage. Our politicians are bad people. They cause us a lot of trouble. They make decisions up here, and they make decisions at the state capitol that are so bad and cost us so much forever. I'll never live to see the bills paid. No, neither will many of you. Matter of fact, none of you will. The bills are up there are so big. But while these guys are running for office and just getting their little words out and they think people are going to vote for them, I, I hope the people are smarter. Um, I don't know. We have a, a very uh, bad bunch of people in the state who don't know how to vote. They vote how they're told to vote. Thank you, Mr. You know what I mean, Thank Mayor? you, Mr. You know what I mean, right? Young. Hey, thank you very much. But I, I really think and would urge you to nix that town council issue about cutting back on public comment. Thank it, you. It happened six years, eight years ago by the Democrats, if I recall correctly. Isn't that right, Mr. Hurley? Then they cut out, only gave us one, 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 uh, one time to talk at the end of the meeting or the beginning of the meeting, and then you guys came in and wiped them out. Remember that? Could happen again. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella? Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I'd just like to speak on the uh, agenda item concerning the freight liner dump truck. And uh, as with most of our vehicle purchases, we seem to rely very heavily on a schedule of replacement. Uh, for this dump truck, it says it's 10 year cycle, which we've exceeded. Um, I'd like to see you consider moving away from a set schedule for vehicle replacement and looking at actual condition of the vehicle and how much maintenance and downtime is actually occurring. Uh, the write-up says that uh, the impact, if not approved, the aging vehicle will not be in service due to repairs. The time the vehicle will not be in service due to repairs will increase. Uh, there's also a line in here about uh, maintenance on it will continue to grow and the vehicle will spend more time getting repaired versus on the road. I'm kind of a numbers, facts, and figures kind of guy. I think when you, when you want to evaluate something, you should look at some actual data. And, uh, you know, computers are a great thing. Everybody has one on their desk. I'm sure there must be a, 
a maintenance program out there somewhere that tracks all the maintenance work that's done on all the town equipment and how many times it's in the garage and when and what parts are replaced and how much labor goes into it how many times the vehicles towed off the road are unable to uh, go out on a snowstorm and plow snow or what's the actual impact to the town when a vehicle is down now we're talking about a dump truck we're not talking about a a first line fire apparatus where you want to have 99.99% availability. You don't want to have a fire and everybody jumps on the truck and it doesn't start or it breaks down on the way to the fire. We don't want to see that. But a dump truck is a little bit different situation. How many times has a dump truck been out of service in the middle of a snowstorm or some other critical operation? Maybe they maybe they had to switch trucks and use a vacuum truck to vacuum leaves with a different vehicle i don't know the particulars but i think that we ought to start looking at real actual numbers rather than just having a text that says it's time to replace the vehicle so let's spend one hundred ninety six thousand dollars that's a lot of money and uh you know i'm around town a lot I, i'm proud of all the vehicles that the town of weathersfield has there most of them seem to be in very nice shape, nicer than my own vehicle. Uh, and I don't know the particulars for this vehicle, but I think we ought to be able to look at some actual numbers and say, yeah, we spent $3,000 each year for the last 10 years on maintenance on, on the average truck, and this one, we just spent $10,000 fixing it or $20,000. No, we don't get that. We just get a, a little one paragraph to justify $200,000 expenditure. Now, there was a case not too long ago with one of the town vehicles. Uh, I think it was a combination natural gas gas vehicle. And they got like 18 years out of it or something. It was phenomenal. But, you know, you replace something when it needs to be replaced. You don't replace it because it's on a schedule, you know. It's, it's just not the way to do business. And I think that data should be out there. Uh, it should be readily available by the personnel in the maintenance garage. Guys punch a time clock when they work on vehicles. They re should be recording which work orders they're on. It should be able to just pull it up and find out how much materials was issued to the certain vehicle, how much manpower, how much downtime, and then look at it and make a uh, an educated decision on whether to spend $200,000. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Rue? George, George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. Just a, a very simple question. I, I didn't hear the gentleman's question over here quite clearly. But these things that you're going to pass tonight, these are not ordinances that are going to take effect like in three weeks, are they? There's a, a, a fairly lengthy process. There's no lengthy process. In other words, if you vote on these things tonight, they're going to start like tomorrow? No, like I told the other gentleman, uh, Dolores will um, put a notice in the newspaper of it, adoption, yeah. and then there's, I believe, a 10-day period after that. Is there a public mm -hmm. hearing after that also no, again? There's no. no further public hearing? No. All right. This Th is it tonight. All right. So then, in, 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 in consistent with that, I would recommend that you table that particular item, Ordinance Amending Chapter A-180, Town Council Rules and Procedures, and give that some further thought. I really would recommend that very strongly. And the other thing, on the more positive side, it's been very negative tonight, but that's the way life goes some days. Our little pond is great. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're suffering from an algae bloom that we have a no. green pond at the moment. And as a matter of fact, I saw this gigantic turtle sitting on the dam the other day, and my little great-grandson, he says, Pop, Pop, look, it's a green turtle. But he must have come up through the, through the algae. <laughs> but the other thing is we've seen a number of people, a lot of people come and look. I saw a blue heron there the other morning. So, uh, but there's some growth that needs, that needs a little bit of attending. But on, on, on balance, it's a... It's a, it's a real contribution to the neighborhood, okay? But that doesn't offset these other concerns. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Sikas.
Lee Sikis, 117 Wells Road. Uh, listening to people, listening to issues, cost factors like uh, the tolls and the roads and the dump truck. A lot of things the general public does not actually know what the true cost is. True, the uh, gas tax doesn't always go into the transportation expenses for the state. But uh, how much do they collect for transportation, supposedly gas taxes and other things? And how much do they need? Same thing in this town. How much do we need for our roads? How much do we need for our personnel? Retirement, uh, people quitting their jobs, or uh, uh, well, this is where uh, are the costs for stop signs? Uh, for crying out loud, uh, the amount of time it cost just to occupy this room, uh, you could pay for probably a dozen stop signs for uh, Gus. And some uh, employees uh, in this town, I've been told, some of them aren't here anymore, have personal grudges against certain people with certain issues. And that's a factor that we should consider if we're voting, because really, uh, people with a valid reason, a legal right to reason, should have that, uh, you say, the fight needed to win. Uh, now maybe, uh, maybe the Human Rights uh, Commission could help us out with a stop sign. So after all, uh, we're here to work together, aren't we? And uh, just uh, the cost of the school and stuff, all that stuff, we, people need a more better breakdown of what they expect to make. And I remember last year, or more, more than a year maybe, uh, the turf for the, for the uh, ballpark, uh, football field. They collected uh, some money for admissions, but a lot of it went to writing, I was told. And very little was left for the uh, million dollar expense job they had for the high school. People need to have a better breakdown of where their money goes, not in you know, absolutely specific penny for penny, but more general information as to where, so we know where to vote and, and where to fight to have what we really need to make this community better. Right, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sekis. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Anybody else? Seeing no one, we will move on to council reports. Do we have any council members who have reports to make? I do. Councillor Bratton. Thanks, Mayor Bell. Uh, I wanted to report that the Bicycle and Pedestrian Stakeholders Advisory Committee had their second meeting. Um, this group was formed um, essentially to identify a network of preferred bicycle and walk routes and then to form the framework uh, for actions to make it happen. Um, it's a very large group. Um, the kickoff occurred um, a few weeks back. Um, there's an, I, I, I don't know if you noticed as you walked in, there's um, a new bike, report, bike repair station right between the town hall and the library. Um, it has all kinds of cool tools and gadgets. I don't know a lot of what they all do, but there is an air pump on there. I could identify that. Um, and it's available for the public to use. So, um, and I'm looking forward to get my bike uh, tuned up again and start participating in uh, some bike rides. But um, there's a survey on their website um, that I would encourage folks to go uh, take a look at and, and offer your input because um, the, the plans are just being, you know, sort of put together. Um, and work groups have been established to assess existing conditions around town, sidewalks, good routes, you know, just, it, it, a lot of folks are starting, the wheels are in motion for folks to start, no pun intended, to start to look at things. Um, and in October, there will be a um, public workshop <coughs> for folks to come in and look at maps and plans and prior master plans and provide their insight. Um, I'm, I think it's an exciting thing for Wethersfield. Um, and there's, uh, we can maybe put the website in the, I can give you the website to put in the, um, in the minutes. Um, and I had one more. Um, the Shade Tree, um, uh, committee met or commission met and um, as many are aware there's uh, for a few years the emerald ash borer which is an invasive insect has been doing damage to the ash trees all over the northeast and 
beyond. Um, and so in an effort to mitigate um, the risk of things like falling limbs and trees um, that has basically been caused by the insects infestation, uh, the tree warden will be selecting contractors to remove ash trees that pose emerging hazards. <coughs> Um, so this, this work will occur by the end of the summer, um, and the areas of concern are four trees on Garden Street and areas around Webb School um, at the intersections of Willow and Prospect and Willow and Wells. And the affected trees will have postings, so you can, you can see where they are. And if, if you have any questions, you can um, contact Corey Christians, uh, the tree warden. And um, we've been removing trees or ashes for f about two and a half years now. There's, there's an inventory that he gave me if anybody has any questions on it. But um, they're really looking to try to make sure there's no, no hazards. So that's it. Thank you. Anybody else have council reports? Councilor Hurley? Um, the Housing Authority met last week, and they interviewed a few investment advisors. They put an RFP out. They're looking to see if they can get a better investment advisor for their for their uh for the board and they're looking at ways to rehabilitate one of their buildings at 55 lancaster road it's a pretty outdated building and they want to try to do something with it they're working with the federal government to try to get some money to see what they can do and they're also looking to have a block party this summer they didn't do it last year but they did it several years ago and it was a good thing for that community just to kind of everybody to get to know each other Thank you. Any other council reports? Any council comments? Council comments? Okay, I have just a couple. Um, the LED streetlights are up. There are two street lights um, that have been changed to LEDs on Knott Street, two on Hillcrest Avenue, and two on Church Street. Um, the engineering department is looking for input from residents on which light fixtures they like best. They are all the same, is it Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin? Um, so it's the same strength of light, but it's just the way the light is projected is different. Um, and if you get a chance to drive down those three streets, you can see the two um, lights that have been changed and you can uh, send your comments to the engineering department until July 29th. Second, town hall is, um, has summer hours right now. So the town is, hall is open until 6 p.m. on Thursdays, but closes at 1 on Friday. Uh, taxes are due this month. Um, Keeney Coolers has their concert series Tuesday evenings at 6.30. It will be tomorrow night and the following Tuesday, July 24th. Uh, and finally, Bobby Granado, the chairperson of the Board of Ed and I, will be at the Creamery on Main Street um, this Wednesday from 6.30 to 8 for an informal meet with residents, anybody who wants to come and speak to anyone, either one of us about anything, we are happy to talk to you then. Okay, um, town manager report. I don't actually have any reports this time, but just like to mention that the Weathersfield Teen Theater will be performing their summer musical this Thursday night starting July 19th, Friday night and Saturday night with a Saturday matinee at the Weathersfield High School and they're doing Legally Blonde. And tickets are $12 for adults and $7 for students and senior citizens. The evening shows start at 7.30 and the Saturday matinee is at 2 o'clock. And the auditorium is nicely air conditioned. <laughs> <laughs> Very good, thank you. Dolores, do you have any communications? Yes, it's still uh, time for people to um, register to vote for the uh, primary. It is August 14th. We have a Democratic repri primary as well as a Demo uh, Republican one. Uh, we have absentee ballots will be available, not until um, July 24th, but we will have absentee ballots for that election if you need it so you can call my department for that the clerk's office we have um, dogs registration uh, so we have 1500 
16 dogs so far registered. We have probably another 1,500 to go. <laughs> so get your dogs registered. Um, and that's, and I, as the bike repair station, I didn't know what it was initially. And then all of a sudden I went out and these little boys, about nine or 10 years old, had their bikes flipped up and down. They would have, took their chain off. They would get putting air in the tires and checking everything about. So it's nice to see they use it as well as adults who drive, who come to the library and see it. It's very, it was, they were funded by the uh, health district and to all of the, each four of the towns got them and the planner in our town decided to put it right in, in, in the uh, entranceway. So it's really used very well. Thank you, That's I'm glad it. to hear it's used. Okay, so now we can move into council action. First item, we have some uh, resignations to accept. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to accept the resignation from boards of commissions in the Central Connecticut Health District, John F. Forsimo at 185 Broad Street, effective June 1st, 2018. And from the Shade Tree Commission, Commission Melissa Wagner Pavic, um, 185 Wells Drive, effective July 1st, 2018. Okay, I think um, John Aphorismo is also coming off of Historic District Commission as well. Can we add that as well? So moved. <laughs> moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. We don't have any appointments to boards and commissions tonight. So we will move into our ordinances. Do I have a motion for the ordinance amending the Fair Rent Commission? Councilor Forrest? I'd like to move to amend the ordinance regarding the Fair Rent Commission effective September 1st, 2018 and, wish, and uh, ask for a chance to summarize. And ask for a chance to summarize. Sure, may I have a second? Second. Okay, Councilor Forrest. Um, so essentially we're on a process here of looking at our boards and commissions for uh, lean and streamlined government in order to, uh, am I still not speaking to it? Is it yeah. You're the best. In order to, of course, streamline government, uh, provide a nice and effective government, um, provide some more transparency than even we always are seeking to, and of course working with our current boards and commissions and understanding the work that they do. So with that, we looked at the, one of the commissions that we looked at was, we looked at many commissions, but this particular one is for fair rent. Uh, the fair rent commission is one that does not meet very often, uh, was a fairly large commission, has uh, some significant powers, including the subpoena power, and we thought it was of the best interest of the town to um, reduce its size for uh, some very specific people, probably with a little bit of legal background and or judicial or administrative background. Uh, for fair rent uh, issues as they arise. So that's essentially the amendments for this particular ordinance. Thank you. Are there other council comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Hi. Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Next is the ordinance amending the article for redevelopment agency. Do I have a motion? Mayor, if I might. Mm -hmm. I move to amend the ordinance, Article 29, Redevelopment Agency, effective the 1st of September, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Councilor Forrest. Thank you. Um, I'd actually like to move a technical amendment right now. As a uh, public comment came up, I was trying my best to take as thoughtful notes as possible, and the speakers were extremely thoughtful as well. Um, and there's a technical change I'd like to make, and I'd like to change the word manage to manner in section B of code section 10111. The last sentence where it says, any vacancy shall be filled for the unexpended, unexpired term in the manager currently says, but I'd like to change manager to manner of the original appointment, which seems appropriate. Okay, any other amendments to that? That was the only one for that one? Yes, it was a technical change. There. Okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. If we could all vote on the amendment first. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. The amendment passes. Is there any comment on the 
um, ordinance. If I could, oh. Madam Mayor. Go ahead. Uh, just taking care of the amendment, the technical sure. change quick first. Um, this is, of course, the redevelopment agency uh, in an effort, I think, uh, which appears to be sort of a universal concept of creating more redevelopment in our town in order to increase our tax base, in order to try to lift some of the burdens of the tax burden from the strict residential tax. Uh, we have enlarged this from five electors to seven in order to get not just a more diverse group, but even more people in the room in order to <coughs> keep pushing what, more people doing the good work for Weathersfield. So it's an enlargement of this group. And I think it's also a group that is going to be uh, not just re, uh, not just not really reconsolidated, but there'll be new, some new fresh blood that we put on there in order to see if we can't get some redevelopment projects going in town. Thank you. Are there other council comments? Councillor Rell. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Forrest, for that explanation. Um, I did have a question about the increasing from five to seven on this um, uh, redevelopment agency. Just trying to find some information about this group online. It doesn't look like they've met for a number of years, and I'm just wondering if we know um, have they met recently? And if so, um, would there be minutes for any of their meetings? Dolores, do you have that information? I don't believe they've met recently. I think uh, it was before they tried to do two different projects, both on the Sadestine and on the Berlin Turnpike. But there are, there are minutes and I'm sure we have them in uh, at Peter's office or mine. Okay. Just simply looking at the town website, I can't find anything. And in fact, going to their um, minutes online, it does come up with the file not found. So if maybe we could correct that so that some information can be mm -hmm. um, put forth. Hearing the um, speaker speak briefly about the Fair Rent Commission, um, <laughs> and that they had not met for a while. And that was kind of the reason why um, to shrink the size of the Fair Rent Commission. Here we have a commission that hasn't met since 2011, yet we're expanding it from five to seven. Just questioning, I don't think expanding the number of members would be appropriate to get the members to meet more. I think we would probably want to put some pressure on the actual members, the five members who are currently on there to, to meet rather than increase the, the size of the commission. I mean, it looks like with all these other um, consolidations, we're looking to decrease the size. Here we have one that doesn't meet and we're trying to increase the size. Just questioning the rationale behind that. Council Forrest? Sure. Uh, one, uh, one correlation that you made to the previous uh, committee is not, is not an appropriate correlation of this particular committee. The first commission that we reduced the size of wasn't because they weren't meeting frequently. It's because, and they meet on an ad hoc basis and as needed basis. So if there aren't any fair rent committee, commission meetings uh, issues that are coming up before them, then they're just sort of naturally not going to meet. If there were seven or ten issues in a particular year, they would be meeting all the time. So one of it was, some of it was, we have a bit of a lack of, uh, sometimes it's very difficult to fill some of these vacancies. So the, the thought was for that particular agency that if we have, uh, with those particular powers on that particular agency, that finding a good core small group of people would be appropriate for the town of Wethersfield. That's not particular to this particular reason. The particular reason for the redevelopment agency is that that particular agency went sort of dormant after they had seen some failures in, in some recent years at that time. It is our, it is our hope, I think, as a town, that by expand, not, by, not by, by expanding and adding a new core group of, of members to that committee, that we'll be able to reinvigorate it with uh, some, some new blood, some new ideas, and uh, really be able to, who, and a group of people who will be able to take another shot at redevelopment, something that whether or not we've been successful in the past or not successful in the past is something that this town is uh, in sore need of. And so it's not really based on the number in particular. We're simply providing the town an opportunity to find seven great people in this town, Republican, Democrat, Green, Libertarian, unaffiliated, whatever, 
to be able to push redevelopment forward. So that's not, it's not based, on, it's not a sized based concept. Uh, it was at five before. It's not that they had necessarily had trouble making a particular quorum. I, I think that it is uh, at that, for whatever reason or reasons with, from whatever individuals, at this time they were not at meeting actively and that's a change that I think this council, well, I'm hopeful that with the votes this council want to make. And now this gives us a chance to enlarge that number to get those active citizens in there to help our town out. Someone else. Ralph. To follow up with that, I mean, I'm looking at the, the committee membership and I, I know four out of the five personally and, you know, you're talking about Democrat, Republican, Independent, Green, unaffiliated. You have two Democrats, a Republican, an Independent, and an unaffiliated on here. So it is pretty diverse. Um, I don't think it's the fault of five versus seven or even the, the members themselves. Do, do the members them on this agency know that this is being re, or increased and are they seeking to be reappointed or would it be the uh, goal of this change to get rid of the current five and replace those five with seven brand new people? I don't think it's the goal to get rid of anybody or to necessarily appoint anybody. I think the council's gonna have to take a look at that committee as a whole to see what are the right group of people in order to um, fulfill re our redevelopment, our mutual redevelopment goals. Councilor Rell, can you just tell me how many um, have active terms, how many have expired, have their terms expired? Uh, I don't have the list in front of me, I apologize. It doesn't, it doesn't say, it just says commission members, it doesn't have appointment dates, uh, termination dates, anything it, it seems to me that they are just appointed members to this agency and to be called on when they needed when they are needed okay so no term excuse me go ahead so thanks mayor there's no term no okay. it's when they started it's when they come up with different ideas to put in but they one of the things that they were looking at is now been is being developed as the boarding group because they were, that was the fun zone thing that they were trying to do and something else down at Hartford, you know, freezer. So they are, can, can get together and go and look at other projects to go on. Did this group meet for the Borden project? Not, no. not to my knowledge, no. no. Um, I think that the group needs direction from the council and I don't know that the the, count, the council or town manager had given that direction in the um, recently. Uh, part of our intention is to reestablish the guidelines, create terms, um, and re kind of re-energize this group. And it will take it will take uh, direction from the council and the town manager to get that to happen. Um, is is this? all new language or is the only change increasing from five to seven it's the only change and it, and the change of the word manage to manner as we previously right. discussed Amended. so i don't think by simply increasing from five to seven we're going to accomplish any of the goals that you set forth there i mean well if that it, yeah and it, so there should be terms according to this that have not been effectively I think there should used. be mm -hmm. I think it should be looked at who appoints these members terms it's actually done by statute Mr. L. It, oh okay. the, the, town the statute is clear that the town manager appoints, appoints these particular them. members state statute oh by state statute yeah, yeah. It, that's it, about we're bound by that obviously okay and are we set by appointing authority by statute, is it just the town manager who appoints town the, council? The statute, from my understanding, is fairly clear that the town manager appoints with it's sort of like an advice and a consent concept with the town council. Okay. In fact, I think the language that you see in 10-111A is as, is exactly parroted in the state statute. But we do have the town attorney here to let us know that. But I'm I'm pretty sure he's just going to get up and say yes because we asked that question, or at least I did. Okay. Councilor Hurley? Yeah. Okay. But a good question, though. I understand. Um, ha was this uh, committee 
talk to about these changes? I think a letter went out when we were doing all the all of the changes, I believe. But I remember, mean, it would have been nice to get their kind of what they did in the past <laughs> if they wanted to move to seven or if they thought five was good because they they were the ones that were doing it. Yeah. And again, I think this is a little bit of a council initiative as well to enlarge this group to give more players a chance to be part of the success of the town. No, I get that, but we should probably talk to the committee first just to see what they what they're thinking. I would move to kind of table this one and look at it. I I would second that motion if that is a motion to table. It was a motion. Second. Okay, I'm just I'm I'm looking through my um I'm looking through my email and I do believe a a letter was sent out to the members of Inland Wetlands Conservation, Solomon Wells, Park and Rec, uh, the Disabilities Commission, Human Rights and Relations, Tourism, Culture of the Arts, Senior Advisory, oh, no, not them, and the redevelopment. So those members were sent um, a letter saying that changes were being made to their um, committee or commission and that we had a information session um, the Rules and Procedures Committee held on June 20th at 6 p.m. to uh, answer any questions that anybody would have. Did we hear back from anybody on this agency? I did not. I did not. Dolores, did you hear back from no. anybody? On, no. And I'm just wondering if we have, you know, just thinking out loud here that we got to make sure we have the correct email addresses of these folks if we did email them. The letters did we email um, or mail? In some cases, we uh, mailed hard copies of letters. Okay. So that made me sure we had they got it if their emails. Right. If they there. haven't met since 2011, some people do change email addresses. So mm -hmm. if a physical yes, but um, we tried mail. to get them. We sent emails to everybody and we sent letters to the people. Well, it, well, let me clarify that. A letter was sent to the chairperson of the board or commission if one existed. If a chairperson did not exist for that board or commission, then letters were sent to all members. Okay. So for some, we know Inland Wetlands meets, we know who the chairperson is, we sent that letter out. Um, but for Human Rights and Relations, the commission who had not met in several years, there was no chairperson. So in that case, letters were sent to individuals on the board or commission. Okay. Councilor Latina. I just wanted to... Um comment that um, the folks from the Disabilities Committee never got the letter. The chairperson did not? Never did. So I don't know if you want to go back and just maybe check. Sure. Well, we have copies of all the letters that were sent out, <coughs> and we certainly have it on our email. If we have the person, if, if the name. We have um, inside. I don't know what your letter had. I don't Any, think we, yeah, the commissions they had not met, we did not have an, the, our the commissions did not. Yes, the commission that did not have a chairperson. Every member received the letter. If the board or commission had a chairperson, that chairperson was to be eat, to be mailed out a letter. So. To answer your question, everybody on the redevelopment commission in, the, in without a chair would then receive that. Is there a chair designated on that? No, it does not look like it. Okay. So each of these members got should have received letter. one. Yes, they came out of the um, town manager's office, and we can follow up and with Cheryl. If, would they if be you're concerned? Granted, first right of refusal for reappointment, or. Would this be a clean slate of seven new members? I'm not sure how that how uh, that will work. Under That'll this particular ordinance, it, it, it's written in to the extent that the only thing that changes in the ordinance is going from five to seven, and of course the technical change of manner. So nothing. So that's what the change is. is we're adding two more seats. There's no more. It's not more complicated than that. It's just that. I'm, I'm just, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. I was just going to say, I'm just a little uncomfortable if not everybody is confirming that they received a letter. I think that maybe is a bigger issue here. 
<laughs> because if some folks didn't receive this letter and were unaware of some of the changes or amendments, then maybe we should table to give more time for folks to look things over. And I personally would like to hear from the members on the redevelopment committee to make sure that they're fine with this. Um, and maybe if we could clarify, like, does somebody send in a resume they want to join as one of the other two members? Or how are we seeking those folks? We we'll go through the normal appointment process for all committee members, according to all of our ordinances. There would be no, there would be nothing different. If you, you would present yourself to the town council, and town council, just like we've done today, would approve somebody to go on a board or commission, and we sometimes accept resignations and we sometimes accept appointments. So is that something that like the general public would see in the newspaper? There would be some sort of notice to ask for volunteers for this. You certainly could do that if you wanted to. You could. I'm just asking what the normal process is. I mean, we're I, I all believe, sort of insiders, so yeah, we I, go through steering committee, if I'm I not mistaken. The, I believe the screening committees do solicit um, volunteers at, at different times during the year looking for people to fill boards and commissions because we do need to maintain certain um, quorums. Yeah. A, yeah, certain quorums. This would be a town manager appointment, but can it? Candidates would be brought to the town manager's attention. People interested in serving would be brought to the town manager's position. And again, maintaining um, the quorums would be, you know, important as well. And I do think we need to um, reinstate um, terms because that's... Yeah, clearly that's clearly, not there. Yeah, yeah. Councilor Hurley, did you have something? Well, I motioned a table and Mike Rell second. We should probably vote a while on ago. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 Abstain? Motion fails. Councilor Lesser? Th thank you, Mayor. The, this is I'm on the Rules and Procedures Committee, and this is uh, a change to do two things. One to just re-energize the redevelopment committee that hasn't met in several years. Secondly, the goal after re-energizing it is to try and get folks around the table to talk and develop and lead redevelopment in Wethersfield with the objective there to try and grow the commercial base so perhaps <coughs> we can ease the burden a little bit on the residents. That's a simple put. And the change in the ordinance is just to go to five to seven and trying to get seven folks to take on that task instead of five. Are there other comments? Yeah. Councilor Hurley? But we haven't talked to the other board members just to see is five, could we get five people together? Could we get seven people together? Would they want nine people? I think it was just somebody just randomly came up with seven, which doesn't seem right. I, that's why I said let's table it. Let's have a little more discussion on this since this is very important to the town. Well, there, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe Rules and Procedures has met um, Councilor Forrest three times? Yes, I'd say at least, including Rules? outside. You know, yeah, but we haven't met as a council. This is the first time we're talking about it as a council. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Move the question. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. no. Abstained? Motion passes. Um, the next one is an ordinance establishing a Veterans Commission. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest? Thanks, Mayor. I'd like to move, uh, I'd like to move to approve an ordinance establishing a Veterans Commission, effective the September 1st, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Councilor Forrest. Um, <clears throat> yes, so the Veterans Commission is actually, um, it's an idea that Councilor Lesser came up, uh, sort of brought to our attention on the Rules Committee. Uh, the effect of it is, of course, as we continue to fight in uh, foreign wars, um, that there's a lot of, uh, that there's a lot of. Okay, well, thank you for bringing that to his Thanks, attention. George. Thank you, George. Please. 
So the idea of the Veterans Committee, of course, is to uh, have some type of a, I don't know if formalized process is the right term, but at least some type of a body commission board that can take on veterans issues as they occur in town. Uh, we also didn't have sort of an enabling committee for uh, Veterans Day services and Memorial Day, uh, mem the Memorial Parade or Memorial Day services. So um, to sort of formalize that, we came up with a Veterans Committee, which will at least have the power, the ability for the town to uh, take veterans' concerns and have a, a process by which to listen to the veterans, filter them through, see if there's anything that the government needs to do to, or the town needs to do or the volunteers need to do in order to support the men and women that have served this country or continue to serve, the, serve this country and also to celebrate their successes and to remember their losses. So this is the committee for that purpose, um, and I hope that we have the support of the council for it. Thank you. Councilor Lesser, did you have anything to add? I know this was your idea. <clears throat> thank you, Mayor, and thank you, George, for, for your service. So many towns have a Veterans Commission. Um, we don't, and the thought here, in addition, as Matt said, to, to help coordinate the Memorial Day activities and the Veterans Day activities is really to be a resource for veterans in town. We have over a thousand veterans who have used the food bank. We have many, many veterans in town who need all kinds of different services, and this would be a place where veterans could bring some of their issues to a town body in a formal way, and we'll, we'll meet regularly. That was a big objective of it. Another one is to the extent that the veterans in town would be interested and like to like to do this, we would love to have the veterans. Uh, talk to kids, go into the schools to talk about their experience being veteran, to, again, to the extent that the veterans would be willing to do that, um, we would like to have them do that to help our students learn more about what it was like to be a veteran, for example, in World War II. Um, so those were some of the ob objectives of establishing a Veterans Commission in Weathersfield. Thank, Thank you, you, Mayor. Are there any other comments? Councilor Spinella? I think, um, Mr. Lesser has put it perfectly. However, Mr. Forrest, we do have an enabling committee for both parades, so that is not accurate. No, an enabling uh, ordinance. You said committee. I may be a misspoke. Yeah. Apologize for that. <clears throat> Any other comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Um, our next motion is the ordinance combining the Committee on Culture and the Arts and the Tourism Commission to create the Heritage Commission. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest? Move to approve an ordinance combining the Committee on Culture and the Arts and the Tourism Commission, creating the Weathersfield Heritage Commission, effective September 1st, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Councilor Forrest? Uh, before we get going too far, there is an amendment on the table, BC4. BC4 is uh, an amendment that I'm going to ask for a motion to approve. It's essentially a discussion with the, when we had um, a listening meeting, we did send out the letters and some, uh, some people were able to come and we did talk to them. It's essentially uh, many of the changes that were requested by the commissions in order to streamline this particular process, make it a little bit more clear, and slightly change the makeup of the group. Uh, this is essentially, this particular merge is born out of a study that was done about, um, uh, about four or five years ago, but I'm estimating that, where it where was a recommendation um, that, that these two committees be combined. Um, out of that, since that time, some of the uh, members of that commission were maybe not necessarily here anymore or weren't necessarily appropriate for the time. So we essentially, this particular amendment is a, a list, part of the listening uh, to uh, of the current committees and the, the chair of that, one of which is here today, and um, with the sort of the amendments that they were particularly interested in. Essentially, some of it is um, a more focused uh, a more focused um, powers to look into tourism. There is an aspect of the, of the newer uh, language which talks about enhanced tourism opportunities throughout the entire town. I did hear the public that some of the concerns was that it was solely focused on the Weathersfield. So while there is certainly some language regarding the Weathersfield, some of it is also for tourism opportunities throughout the entire town. 
Uh, there are some changes, uh, some sort of technical changes. For example, one resident of Weathersfield is on one of the technical change of number five, uh, not a member of the regional, uh, central regional tourism district, uh, which was taken out because there was some concern that that tourism district might not be necessarily active and the tourism group could always invite a person from that group if they so needed. But then there was something added in that, it would, that the resident from Weathersfield would preferably be from the arts and culture community, which was a request of that particular group. You'll also see in section um, C that there's some streamlining of uh, the appointment process and essentially everyone will be on three-year terms um, and appointed in due course by the town council. Um, and, any, and then there's an addition C that any vacancy of membership of the commission shall be filled by the council for the unexpired term of such member, which is sort of a standard process. So I'd like to move BC4 and also technical changes, which we just heard today as to 2A1 and 2, add in the words or designee at the ends of 1 and 2. So it will read executive director of the Weathersfield Historical Society or designee. And number two, executive director of the Webb Dean Stevens Museum or designee. We'd heard some public comment on that. It's a technical change, but an appropriate one nonetheless. And um, I think, and I would like to add that to my amendment BC4, and I ask for adoption. Thank you. <coughs> Need a second for that? <clears throat> so um, that's the amendment. Do we have a second for the amendment? Second. Okay. All in favor on the amendment? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstention? Okay, so the amendment has passed. Back to the ordinance. Are there any councilor comments on the amended ordinance? Councilor Latina. I think that we should take out the word old as was suggested earlier because I do believe we should treat it as a town mission and not just one section of town versus the other. Okay, other, other councilors comments? Councilor Hurley? Um, it was mentioned that the Old Weathersfield Shopkeepers Association might not be around, so <clears throat> we should probably amend that to say somebody from a shop in Old Weathersfield, not that association, maybe somebody that represents them. I think that the I think the comment was that they they might not be around in the future, like that. But I have not heard that they've disbanded. Is that they they're still around? Okay. <laughs> and of Word course, the evening. and of yeah. course, if we need to make that technical change in the future, that would be something that we could obviously, obviously do. I'd also like to see the old taken out. I mean, all of Weathersfield. I know a lot of it's down in Old Weathersfield, but it'd be nice to have all of Weathersfield represented. Um, okay. Would you like to make a motion? I'd be happy to second that motion. I'll motion to take out of. I guess one, it's two. one B two. Old, in front of Old Weathersfield. I second that motion. Thank you, Councilor Hurley. Okay, we have another amendment. Let's vote on that. Um, we have a, an amendment and a second. All in favor to taking old out, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Great. The second amendment passes. <laughs> Councilor Rell. We're getting there. And then Jackie. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. There was concern with. <clears throat> 2A11, one representative of the town government staff, uh, the town manager, or an appointee. Do we want to have that taken out and rewarded to uh, a liaison town rather than have a, uh, an actual town staffer be a representative on the um, uh, commission? and have it be a liaison to the commission for the town? Councilor Forrest, in, um, in the document um, that we were trying to emulate, right. it, it did have the town um, staff as a voting member, did it not? It did, I believe it did, yeah, and, it did it, well. and even in committee, there, there was certainly that discussion. And the idea was, to some extent, that the tourism commission is, an, the new heritage commission is, of course, an, an important commission for this town, but that we should have somebody from the town there, as we do in some other uh, some other committees and boards, 
because there's going to be a, anything that's done with tourism is usually going to be a hand in hand that's going to go with the town, whether it's getting the showmobile, taking off, you know, mark taking streets off. So that particular handshake agreement uh, and a lot of the efforts that they will do in the future and continue to do, having that pers town person there was a really good benefit in that actual committee to be able to have the town manager or his or her designee. So it, we thought it was important uh, in order to do that. This is existing language then, right now? <coughs> well, it's a combination of the two, but I believe the language for many of these come right from the what the commission for, it was a study that was done related to the heritage and tourism. And I believe some of this language, or most of these, most of these appointments came from that language. But I don't, I don't have that particular document in front of me, so I don't want to So there's no town staff appointment right now to this? Well, they're two separate entities coming together. So right. At, that, this, at this moment, this, this committee doesn't exist until it's But in finished. any of those two, there, is there a town staff appointment? From tourism? I'd have to ask. No, I'm getting a shaking of my head, so. Okay. There's yeah. a liaison. Right. And the town planner may, someone just said, and I know that, um, but we just had a member of the audience who's a member of one of these indicate that the town planner is a liaison to this, these particular groups. And the town planner may continue to be a liaison as the designee for the town as manager's designee. office. But Okay. I mean, I'm, like all of us, I'm sure we're excited about culture and the arts and the various festivals that we have in town. And a lot of times they do take coordination, of course, with our police and, and the town. So at least as a subcommittee, but of course the council may deem see differently. But I thought it was important to have at least one member be, be there in the mix and that that would be a good thing. Any other comments? Any other comments? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. Next is the ordinance merging Solomon Wells and Advisory Rec and Park and changing the name of the board. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Move to approve an ordinance merging the Solomon Wells House Committee with the Advisory Recreation and Park Board and changing the name of the board effective September 1st, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Councilor Forrest. Um, as far as a... As far as a technical change, I'd like to move an amendment right now that was brought up at public comment, thoughtfully, I might add, and that is to section 10-63 alternates. The last word in that section is the word matter, M-A-T-T-E-R, and it should properly be manner. So we're essentially establishing a procedure for the sitting of an alternate member in a fair and reasonable manner. So I'd like to move that technical change before I summarize. And are there other amendments that you're making? That was the only amendment to that one? That's it. Okay. Um, do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any comments on the amendment? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. The amendment passes. Back to the ordinance. So back to the ordinance. This is um, Park and Rec's obviously handled the Park and Recreation. This was a committee created um, with a good number of people in it for the sole purpose of stewarding uh, a particular building that is situated within a park. So it was, uh, it seemed to be a natural combination in order to move these two people together. In order to do that, or not these two groups together, um, and so now Park and Recs, which has its uh, governance over parks and recreation, now has governance over a building within a park and uh, within a park. So that seemed fairly straightforward. We did expand, uh, the Park and Recreation Board does a tremendous amount of work in that governance and in an advisory group. <coughs> we did, we were, uh, it just through discussion and subcommittee, I think, and everyone was on board with it, of all parties, that we talked about increasing the number of the Parks and Recreation Board to by one to seven. And that's really the technical changes in that particular ordinance. And we have the name change as well? And yes, I suppose there's a, a name change if there's a name change. But it's a name change. Mm -hmm. It doesn't change. All of the powers of each are merged now into one. And um, I guess as a technical note, just for your knowledge, we're going to introduce a we're going to introduce another ordinance today to be hopefully passed in a few at our next at our next council meeting. 
and that's going to be to move the harbor uh, the harbor commission from six to seven members in order to match this particular ordinance it's a technical change so that you when you have seven members sitting on the park and recreation board they can act um, on behalf of any of the powers that they're they're enabled and not have to essentially remove one person on a technical for, uh, just because of a technical error or a technical change so um, that's it okay any council comments questions on this one anything okay seeing none um, all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed abstentions okay motion carries <clears throat> <coughs> the next one is the motion to approve an ordinance for inland wetlands and water courses in conservation. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. This particular motion is to approve an ordinance combining the Inland Wetlands and Water Courses Commission and a conservation commit and the Conservation Commission, effective September 1st, 2018. Okay, do I have a second? Second. All right, Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> Um, I'd like to move now a proposed amendment for action that's before you, BC6. Um, this particular amendment came out of um, discussion at a, a public meeting that the, that the Rules Committee had. We had the chair of Inland Wetlands uh, who <coughs> provided some fantastic ideas, who also was here at least or in the, audi in the audience here today. Um, had some great ideas and followed that up with an email sort of solidifying those ideas. In addition, I, uh, as serving as a liaison to the Conservation Commission, seem to be pretty much on board with this particular merger. Some members of uh, each committee or each commission were certainly, certainly interested in the merged commission moving forward. Uh, some of the technical changes is to the name, um, not anything of, mere, of great substance there. And... Um, and also the addition of at least a, uh, a place where the council can look to for uh, a review of any type of environmental issues that the council deems fit. So um, that is another sort of technical change and also uh, adding uh, two alternates. So we're looking to add two alternates in order to accommodate sort of the merging of the group and also for some forum discussions that this, this particular chair brought to our attention, um, allowing the group to review any environmental issues that the council may ask of them, and then a combination of the duties and powers. Generally, um, the, du the Conservation Commission has a stewardship uh, over the open space and the, pri and the prioritization of that, and also advise, and advise the council for uh, any type of acquisitions the council may be interested in as far as land. Obviously, inland wetlands and conservation is a a group that is knowledgeable on a lot of inland wetlands and watercourses uh, issues, including uh, including the regulations that um, that are used in the development of those types of lands. So they're a pretty good group that, uh, more than a pretty good group, they're an excellent group, which already has their hands in sort of the environment and the land would be a perfect spot to allow us at least a little bit. We never really had an opportunity for environmental issues or a mechanism to sort of work through those types of issues when they come before the council. So this particular amendment does that, and I would ask for its adoption. Any comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. The next is the Ordinance Combining Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities and the Human Rights and Relations Committee, Councilor Forrest. Thank you very much, Mayor. Um, I think it's fair to say that uh, we have had significant uh, public comment on this particular groups of committees. Uh, we had done some reaching out to various members of both committees, um, and but there are certainly some more here today. Uh, but with that, I think that it wouldn't be appropriate to bring this before the council at this time. Um, it certainly probably needs more consideration, uh, but even further than that, it may in fact, not really be a good move. Um, and I think that that was something that is certainly brought out by the public comment today. It's exactly why we have it, and I'm so pleased that people were thoughtful in their comments on it. So I'm actually going to move to uh, per permanently table this, and, uh, and we'll see where, where it kind of goes from there. Do Dolores? Are you withdrawing it? Yes. 
Yeah. Just vote. So I'm 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 gonna move with it's right now it's it's on our agenda. Right. So Can we, we move it from the agenda? Yeah, okay. We'll move to remove it from the agenda. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, is there any council discussion? Okay, seeing none, all in favor of removing it from the agenda? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay. So the ordinance has been removed from the agenda. That was the fastest one of the night. Thank you, Dolores, <laughs> for that, te that technical change. All right. Um, our final ordinance, amending Chapter A, 180 of the Town Council Rules and Procedures. Do I have a motion? Councilor Forrest. Thank you, Mayor. Mayor, I'd like to move to approve an ordinance amending Chapter A-180 of the Town Council's Rules and Procedures. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, Councilor Forrest. Um, <coughs> thank you, Mayor. Um, this, uh, before I go on to too to deep into this, we do have a proposed amendment of the Rules and Procedures. Uh, it's labeled for action as BC-8. Hopefully it's at the bottom. This is... I guess it's considered a substantive change, although it's an extremely small one. But it's it um, it changes uh, the date of the proposed regular business meeting from the first Monday of each month to the third Monday of each month, and it changes the regular workshop meeting from the first Monday of each uh, from the third Monday of each month to the first Monday of each month. Essentially, lining up sometimes when we have these uh, in the summertime when we have the beginning. Um, council meetings that are canceled this would this particular schedule would line up a little bit better for the regular business meeting to be on a non non canceled workshop essentially for example we had the july 4th uh, the july the independence day committee can, uh, meeting canceled this happens to be the third uh, the third monday of the month so our regular business meeting would be on that time so this was a request at a request from a mayor and i agreed with and i certainly agree with it uh, because it lines up with our with just the regular calendaring of our council meetings the last one which was brought another very thoughtful comment from the public which was brought to my attention is under section c so the the, the amendment that was written and proposed to you i would like to change in this particular motion and i'm looking particularly at c a and um it is uh it is not written as it stands with extreme clarity, and I'm going to attempt to fix that. So CA, I'd like, should read, unless otherwise determined by council, the only vote for a final action on an item on the regular workshop agenda will be to end review of an item, period. And then we would strike from there and not recommend it for further action or review by town council. The, continue lang the continuing language would stay in place. So it's merely changing in that line uh, the only vote for a final action to an item on the regular workshop agenda will be we would strike the word that we would add the word to it would say end review of an item we would add the at a period and then we would strike and not recommend it for further action or review by the town council this is just cleans up the language um, and gets rid of some redundancy and I would move BC8 with the that with that change as an amendment and then ask to clarify the entire <coughs> concept. Okay, thank you. So do we have a second for that amendment? Second. Councilor Lesser, thank you. Um, any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The amendment passes. Councilor Forrest? So this was an idea actually that came uh, from <coughs> from previous councils and the, and the town manager um, in an effort to uh, to, uh, to do a lot of um, get it. We're obviously on television. It's on YouTube, you know, if you see it. The public is here and so forth and so on. <coughs> but this is, a, a, this hopefully is designed to take all of our committee meetings and move them into a workshop and thereby making government more transparent. <laughs> So we would have these committee meetings that, you know, in the room, it sounds back room, but it's really the room that happens to be behind me. But in the, ba in the back there um, for whether it's a, a, a budget committee meeting or some other meeting, and uh, this concept would now bring all those presentations 
before the full council. It would, we would essentially work as a council of, of the whole. Uh, we're a member of nine. We're not a legislature of uh, 250. So uh, this is um, an effort to be more transparent, to have our committee meetings be televised, be put on YouTube, so you can see the inner workings and questions of the council. In addition to that, it also presents an opportunity, as came up today, as Mr. Hurley th thoughtfully brought forward, and he said, you know, I wasn't at that meeting where the Rules and Procedures Committee was here. Now the Rules and Procedures Committee would be as a member of the whole, so all of the counselors could get out their questions, concerns, thoughts, get some answers that they might need at that committee level before the council takes action. And the hope is, um, and this is, the hope is that in that process of having presentations be public, of having all counselors involved in that workshop, that question, that getting data information to be comfortable with a vote one way or the other, that this particular, I didn't come up with this. This is not, uh, this is not necessarily my idea, but it was an idea presented and passed uh, uh, in a three nothing vote in the committee um, process. Uh, to be able to streamline that process, to pr provide more transparency, to take our smaller committee meetings and the great workings of the town staff, bring them to light so that the public can react accordingly and apparently, just as we sort of seen here today for this particular public hearing. So that is essentially uh, the essence of what uh, this particular procedure changes. Um, and it essentially moves one meeting of the month to a workshop meeting where no business will be done. Um, and then one business meeting where all of the monthly business will be done. But at that workshop meeting, we will be have presentations so that all counselors get their chance to uh, dig into the material to come up with the best solutions for our town. Um, and I guess just I realize that we were all not there, but this concepts, which were I think all of, you know, there was no, they were all right there for <coughs> us to discuss, did pass out of committee unanimously. Thank you. I would like to add that um, this idea has been in the pipeline for over two years. When I first was elected to council, um, the town clerk and town manager brought this to the Rules and Procedures Committee of the previous council, um, and we had a few meetings to discuss it, and it, hadn't, it just didn't have the momentum at the time. Um, I do support this, and I support this because we have uh, the town council has committees. We have rules and procedures. We have budget and finance. We have public safety. We have infrastructure. These committees are meeting behind the scenes and making decisions and making recommendations that are then brought to the full council. When it gets to the full council, we many times have to have the conversation over again because other council members um, did not have a full, did not ever hear the conversations that went on in in the committees. So I feel that. This does allow all of us to have a say in all of the, um, the issues instead of having it brought to us in time for a vote. We actually can weigh in before it's brought to us for a time for a vote. Um, also, we will, the town manager will work to have our presentations at this time. So we will work to have the MDC come in at the first meeting of the month. Uh, Central Connecticut Health District, when they give their report, that would be at the first meeting of a month. Um, so it's streamlining the workings of the council in that we will no longer have those committee meetings, um, try to get a quorum and work our schedules to have the meetings behind the scenes. It will all be done here um, in front of the public and on, on TV, although the committee me meetings uh, also were um, open to the public, they were not televised. Um, so the workshop will be between the council members, the department heads who come in, or outside groups who come in and do uh, give presentations. And in the Rules and, and Procedures Committee, it was important to us that the public did have the ability to speak. Uh, and we did not want to curtail that. We wanted to make sure public comment would um, be available every time we meet. So we are, um, we are having a public comment at every meeting, um, and it would, we did discuss it and felt it made more sense to have it after we discussed issues um, rather than before because you wouldn't have the information 
on the issues that were, you know, on the presentations or the discussions. So that is how we came about having the public comment at the end of the meeting. Um, are there other council members who'd like to speak on this? Councilor Spinella. I, I support the, the idea of the workshop, uh, having one meeting a workshop. I, I don't agree that we are giving the public the opportunity to speak that they have now. We're, we're essentially cutting it in half, and in one of these meetings, we're telling them what they can talk about, which is only what's on the agenda. That, that it's, I don't think it's accurate that we're giving them the same amount of access they have to ask questions or make comments as they have now. And I, in fact, I think we're reducing it by 50%. Um, so I don't support that part of this proposal. Okay, are there other comments? <clears throat> Councilor Hurley. I would agree with Councilor Spinella that a public comment should be put in at the beginning of the meeting. It does cut out uh, the public's input. Um, they only have two meetings to talk to us, and we've always had public comment before and after each meeting. I would move to amend the this motion to put after B, B, a public comment section. Second. Okay, um, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I just had uh, one comment, <clears throat> and that was uh, regarding the section of under public comment, the only items that can be discussed are the items on the agenda. That's a workshop to discuss the items in question that are being brought forward. No decision will be made that night. So I think you know it's a good idea to limit the public's comments to that. Any other comments they have can be on any subject would still be available at the regular meeting. So we're not eliminating your ability to speak on any subject. But on that particular night, the workshop is just to get us informed about what's going on. So at the regular meeting, we will vote on whether to do something or not. And once again, the council will, or the public will get to speak before we take that vote again. <clears throat> Any other comments? Councilor Spinella. I, I think that that would be fine if, if people showed up to every meeting, but they don't. So let's say you can't come one week and you wanted to say something, then, then what do you do, you know? Um, there's a very small percentage of people who come every time um, and can speak of what's on their mind at that moment. But I think the vast majority of people don't follow it as closely um, and I don't think we should curtail their ability to come and speak whenever they want about whatever they want. Thank you. Okay, other comments? I would agree with Anthony that when the public comes down here, we do have three or four regulars that come, um, and they do speak all the time, but they should also be allowed to speak on any item that they wanted. But there's generally every. I mean, at least once a month, somebody comes down to speak to us, and they might not have any idea that they can't talk to us. I mean, I think, and that would be bad for us to have somebody come down here to talk to us, and then we tell them that they can only talk about stuff that's on here. Can they? I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Forrest. But they, anybody can talk to us, like emails and call us up. We can have two, I mean, I had three-hour conversations with individuals. People want Everybody the opportunity talks. to come down here and have a, and talk to us. Yeah. And sometimes it's hard for people to come down here and get in front and talk to us, and then we turn them down. That would be a bad thing for our community, I think. I think people want to... It's one thing to voice your concern in an email to somebody or in a, a phone conversation to somebody, but I think the public would like to air their concerns, as you said, on, on TV, on YouTube, in the public, on the record. Uh, if there's reporters in the audience, they want to have their comments noted. Um, I think having the public input, just like what we had voted on with the um, Human Rights and Relations Commission, we did hear from a half a dozen or so people from the public who voiced their concerns, and rightly we tabled permanently or, or took it off the agenda permanently. I think we heard from a number of people with the concern about public comment that we should, in fact, listen to those who made their voices public tonight, aired their concerns to us in a public forum to have them have that ability throughout, uh, you know, going forward with this change. Could you, sorry. Go ahead, Councilor Forrest. Could you be a little bit, 
I'm just trying to understand the change, that, uh, or could you please explain, re-explain the change to me that you're proposing? To have I, public. I, know, I think theory, in theory, it was sort of about, but like technically, to, what's the technical technically change? Technically, to have a public comment after, I guess it's BB, which is a little weird, and then change public comment BI to just say public comment. So BI to say public comment and then strike everything after that. Is that what you're saying? Correct. And then what was, was that? After BB, so you'd have like a B1 and a B2 put in public comment again. Or renumber accordingly. Or, or renumber. letter accordingly. Yeah. Regular workshop meetings. I don't have the, I see where you. You I have A, B, Pledge B, of Allegiance, B, yeah. recording of attendance by town clerk. After that, public comment. So in almost a BC, that's a new BC? New BC. And renumber or read letter accordingly. Okay. Would you like me to make that motion or would you like to Sure. Make okay. I'd like to <coughs> move, uh, move to amend the current motion on the table a, a, of A180-11 and add in section big B little c public comment and strike the word uh, re-letter accordingly after that, and then strike the words after current BI public comment, strike the, letter, the words on items on the regular workshop meeting agenda. Did that, that's really I'll second it. Thanks, Mike. You're welcome. Okay. That's bipartisanship. So we have a motion <laughs> and a second to amend. Do we have any other comments on the amendment? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the amendment passes. Back to the um, ordinance. Do we have any other comments on the ordinance? Okay. Actually, sorry. When does it start? I, are they all September if, 1st? If it I should thought be I made a motion for September. Was it September 1st? I thought they were all, we were going to start uh, them this all one, September 1st. I don't 1st. think I said it on Is there no one? date? There is no date. I think we have to amend it with okay. a date. Well, um, we're we're only meeting we're only meeting once in August, so it would have to start right. in September. I think we should amend right. it. To would you like to do it, Councilor Latina, or shall I? By all means, you should do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, with the fantastic ideas of Councilor Latina, it would move to uh, amend the uh, the main motion made to include the words effective September 1st, 2018. Second. Oh. Okay. Very Council, good. Council Latina, can I get a second? <laughs> second. I right. Okay. So we have a motion, an amended, an amendment made and seconded. Do we have any other discussion on the amendment to add the effective date? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? That amendment passes. Back to the original ordinance. Do we have any other comments on that? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions. Okay, the ordinance passes. Um, what does that bring us? That brings us to um, other business. We have a revised tax incentive agreement for the board. And do we have a motion? Motion to approve the first amended and revised tax incentive agreement between the board and Dash Wethersfield 1178 LLC and the town of Wethersfield and authorize the town manager to sign it. Second. Okay, we have a motion in a second. Um, Kathy, is this something you're discussing or the town attorney? Um, we can both probably discuss the town attorney is here to answer any questions. This is basically just to revise an agreement with some technical changes. And <clears throat> the changes have to do with the, um, the, the, when the developer actually purchased the property, he had a, his, an, his entity for his name is a little bit more formal and different. And so we had to take that account into, uh, take that into account with this, a version of the um, agreement. And also the original agreement had incorrectly described the acreage involved by not taking into account the fact that the property 
actually consisted of two separate parcels totaling 3.23 acres and not 1.83 acres as uh, stated in the prior version. These are really just technical changes to move forward with the agreement. Thank you, Kathy. Are there any questions or comments on this? Councilor Hurley? Does this have anything to do with the bank property now? The property on the corner that was purchased? By no. The developer? No, it has nothing. This is still the uh, fun zone. It's the that property plus the parking lot. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions. Motion passes. Moving on to bids. Our first bid is um, for purchase of fleet vehicles. Make a motion to authorize the purchase of physical services, fleet vehicles, and equipment. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. And Sally Katz, the Director of Physical Services, is here. Kathy, do you want to begin? Sure. This is um, part of our, our budget appropriation for this year to replace both a dump truck and a, um, well, I call it a snow plow, but it's a mini snow plow that would work on sidewalks and would eliminate um, all the ruts that you see when we um, plow the sidewalks now with the Jeep. So the, that is, uh, would be uh, just a total savings in both getting the sidewalks plowed appropriately, but also not having to deal with the ruts every spring when the weather changes and we've created issues with the snow plows. And these are both budget items for this year that have been appropriated. And Sally can answer specific questions about them. Hi, Sally. Thank you for being here. It's a long night. Yes. Um, counselors, do you have questions? Councilor Rell? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thank you, Sally. With regard to the, uh, the mower, Toro mower and snow thrower and plow, um, does that come with a number of options, um, equipment? Yes, it does. And we have specified in that purchase price, there is a, um, I believe, a sheet attached to the documentation which shows the different attachments that we would be purchasing at the time. Um, there are more than that, but at this time, at the very beginning of purchasing this equipment, we wanted to get the ones that we know we would be able to use, making it a, an all-seasons piece of equipment. Good. Um, and then roughly, and I know you probably don't have this off the top of your head, but how many miles of sidewalk do, does the town uh, plow right now? And I know the Jeep has been used in the past, but I've seen where the, the larger trucks are used and they create a wide path it, of. Yes, it's the Jeep with um, a plow on the front of it. And we, the sidewalks, um, you know, on in front of Town Hall, there are ones that we do in, in many of the residential areas around parks. Um, and it's just that we utilize the Jeep because it currently is the um, smallest profile with the smallest plow that we have. Mm -hmm. Because there's, I don't have the specific mileage. I would tell you that we would never be able to do it standing behind snow blowers or shovels or anything else. And so it went from handheld mechanical, uh, you know, uh, manual work to the Jeep, this piece of equipment, and the Jeep has been used for a number of years. And for a number of years, we have received a number of um, complaints that we have damaged um, our own property in the process of it. This particular piece of equipment, which can be used throughout town multiple seasons. This is not just a snow thrower. This is something that we can use uh, during the spring and summer, utilize its mowing capacity, utilize it as a small hauler of things. So if we're on a small project, we can move some things. It gives us a lot more flexibility. It's more agile, um, allows us to get through, as I said, on, on sidewalks, sidewalks at schools, um, in and around where, you know, so we're not damaging plantings and other things like that. It really is a very, very good piece of equipment. Will this be 
driven throughout town or is this uh, towed? No, it's driven. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I just have, you know, I'm looking at. Well, actually, we do. We also can put it on a trailer and take it to another part of town rather quickly right. if we needed to. That may be um, what would be required. Just thinking about snowstorms. Right. We could know. do it from school to school. We do have trucks that we use in the winter that we would be able to utilize a, a small um, trailer, do that, bring it from place to place. Yeah. So I know, you know, if you're on the other side of town from where physical services is and this needs to get up there, you know, you, you're going to be driving a Jeep. A can, <laughs> yeah, you're going to be driving a while. You're going to be right. utilizing a lot of fuel. Right. We also, it. we do have, um, when we do our plowing maps, we have um, different areas. I don't want to call them quadrants because there's more than that. We do the same thing for sidewalks. So we have our specific areas where they do a certain area of sidewalks and then um, multiple teams and then go around at different times to do it. Gotcha. Okay. But I agreed to try to drive it from physical services out to two rod would be a long effort. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Sally, will this replace a Jeep? No, this is in addition to, although I will say that our, um, we do have one Jeep that is down more than it's up. Um, it's a early 1980s Jeep. And while many Jeeps can last quite a long time. Um, we are we are seeing it starting to really go on its last legs. But no, this would be this is, this particular piece of equipment is in addition to what we have, not replacing at this point. And my other question is, do you feel that this will um, be safer for the sidewalks um, around Cove Park? I've received a couple emails that the Jeep driving on the. Mm -hmm large granite sidewalk slabs has cracked and chipped those sidewalks mm, okay. um so i, I <laughs> yeah I, I um it, it does weigh less mm -hmm. and the force of the plow on it would be able to remove snow but without the amount of force that an actual vehicle would would put on it so hopefully it would be as effective but a little bit more dainty in its ability to do its job. Thank you. Councilor Hurley. Hi, Sally. Would this be able to do, this one piece of equipment, be able to do the whole town in one snowstorm? There's not the whole town. I mean, um, all okay. the sidewalks and everything that- We would use it in addition to our other. There are other, there are sidewalks that we have and there are areas that we have where we still could utilize the Jeep. The ones that are narrower, this will allow us to get to them faster. So okay. we would still be utilizing both pieces of equipment, but there's also sidewalks that are in highly public areas that this would be a, a better piece of equipment for and also gives us the flexibility to say at the high school or at any of the schools when we're really pushing it to be able to have the schools be open. Um, just gives us more equipment, more flexibility, more agility to be able to provide that opportunity. We also do the sidewalks on the way to schools. Some of the ones, some of the town owned ones, or all of the town owned ones. Again, it goes by faster. We get, we can get there and get them, um, get them up and cleared. Okay, thank you. Councilor Rell. Um, thank you and thank you for the second time. Uh, can these attachments be put on any Toro equipment that we currently have? Um, at this point, we, we have a Toro that is similar to that. I don't know if these specific attachments because the one Toro that we have is a much older model. Um, however, you know, as we move forward, as we do with anything else, once we purchase a piece of equipment that starts on utilizing certain pieces, we then build on that. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. The next item is the um, removal of underground storage tanks. Do I have a motion? Yes, a motion to award contract to Connecticut Tank Removal to remove the four underground tanks with a project cost of $123,538. Second. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Sally, okay. Sally has been working on this for a while, so. Um, as you know, as the, the town physical services has begun uh, the process of shared services with the schools, um, the Board of Education and us, one of the things that we began to learn about is our underground storage tanks. And it is our procedure to remove any tanks um, that are no longer in use. And the schools run, many of them, on natural gas now. And so uh, we are starting to approach the time when they should be taken out. It is important that we get them out prior to the start of school. Um, and so we have worked with Connecticut Tank Removal, who are on the state contract uh, to provide the services. They did work for us last year uh, very succinctly, very professionally. And so we are moving to remove the tanks at the three schools and the community center. Thank you. Are there any comments or questions for Sally? Yeah, why, why didn't the school know about these and take care of them before, I guess? Uh, at this point, it was uh, the person who was in charge is no longer there, so I don't have that information as to what happened previously. I know that when I started to take them over, there were certain things that I began to investigate, and this was one of them that um, I've learned about and we wanted to take action on. Thank you. Are these the only CIP funds that were available? Who picked these particular funds to be taken? Well. Go ahead. Okay. Because we have a um, CIP group. We do have a CIP group. These were the projects that were associated to the Board of Education. And um, in order to, this is something that is, while we are currently a shared service, um, this was something that the Board of Education um, would have hopefully had dealt with previously, but since it wasn't and it had uh, became known, then we met with the superintendent and said that the projects that had been brought to light, um, we needed to temporarily hit the pause button on in order to be able to get funding to do the projects now um, and to see where this really does end up and, and whether or not there would be any funding left from other projects to potentially fund those. Because one of these isn't a board of ed, it's the community center right. exterior improvements. Do right. we know how much is put aside for each of these? I have those numbers with me. Yeah. Um, with the, um, the community center, we have an, uh, an account with exterior improvements that we were looking to do some of the main front entrance and, and cleaning that up and doing a uh, little more aesthetically pleasing areas out there. And it currently has $45,145 in it. In the, um, the school buildings, one item was to uh, replace carpet with VCT tile at Charles Wright and Hamner, and that currently has 70,000 in it. And also with the schools at, um, to install security films on their windows and doors at Webb, Charles Wright and Hamner, and that has 60,000 in it. We won't need all that money. Councilor Hurley, we also, um, Kathy and I also discussed that we were um, waiting for the end of the year to see if there was any surplus on either the board side or the town council side to see if um, we did in fact have funds at the end of the year that could then um, perhaps start some of those projects back up that we're putting on pause right now. So it seems like two of the projects would cover this. Why did we pick three projects that would cover way more than this, I guess? Well, two of the, two of the projects are Board of Education projects. The third project, we, there's four tanks altogether to, to come out. Um, in order to be fair and not have a project that was a Board of Education's cover the town, um, we looked to parsing out the community center tank and have funding, CIP funding, that would have funded a town project, a community center project, and have that, that money available to do that tank. So of the 45K, you're just gonna take out the money that would be responsible for that one yes. tank? Yes. Okay, thank you. 
and as Mayor referenced, um, this is in order to be able to, the timing of this is what's so very important and we wanted to be able to come to you and show that we would be able to pay for it um, in lieu of year end potential savings on other, in other places. Councilor Rell. This may be before you took over the position for um, the predecessor for the Board of Ed. Mm -hmm. The carpet replacement at Emerson, do you know about that project? That project is well underway and will be completed, should be by the end of next week. Okay. I've heard from parents whose kids go to Emerson that that has um, done wonders for the kids not being sick for whatever reason germs and all that just being you know trapped into carpets um we're looking at holding off then on car re-carpeting charles wright and um hanmer mm -hmm. is there i guess part of the board of ed's proposal was to look at alternatives for you know either hanmer a new school for Hanmer or a new school for Charles Wright or combining the districts. Mm -hmm. um, would we need this carpet funding, you know, the CIP funds for new carpets in Charles Wright or in Hanmer if those projects go forward? Well, to kind of take them one at a time, the, the superintendent of schools is moving to begin the process of interviewing firms to undertake its study of the district as, and the elementary schools. That is soon to be underway. Mm -hmm. This was something that they felt that over the years there's been a movement to try to change from carpet to tile and that these were the projects that were up for this year to be done. Um, as to how long, running on parallel paths, how long the discussion of what schools are going to be around versus changing out carpets really are not dependent on one another. Uh, I, I, I believe in the foreseeable future. Um, each project is necessary. However, I know that the staff at both Charles Wright and Hamner can keep what they have viable and safe for the kids if we have to delay changing the carpets with tile for another period of months. And again, if there is potential savings or the opportunity for funding, we are looking toward being able to do a project possibly over a break in one of the schools. The good part is that we do have the plan for the flooring done. And so we, have, we can put that out to bid or call in people from the state contract at any time. In, in a follow up to Mike's question earlier about the community center, did we know about that 5,000 gallon tank? We had been in the process of changing over because the community center where it is located, there had never been the right pressure in the gas service to be able to 100% know that it would be uninterruptible there have been significant improvements to the gas service into that area once we've proven it over a whole season that we didn't have any interruption then we wanted to take the tank out because it is approaching the end of its useful life and it's in a good area for us to be able to to get it out it's not leaking or anything like no, that we've just converted from gas or um, oil to gas at the community center right. um, this is just we have no indication at all that it is it, that it is um, having any difficulties at all and then the three at the the board of ed locations we did not know about those or we knew about those but we did not know the expiration date of them that the was coming town, up physical services in the town we did not know of these tanks on property okay and well, I guess that goes to commend what we did by putting, combining the positions and putting one person in charge of that. Had we not done that, maybe we would never have known that these tanks were there and 
I don't want to use the term ticking time bombs, but we don't know if right. they would have leaked at the end of their life cycle or if. I can only go by what I, what I know and the action we know we want to take that will solidify us having no issues in the future. And that's what's in front of you. I think that's a good idea. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilor Latina. I just wanted to find out, do we know if there are any other tanks, is this it? <laughs> <laughs> no, this really, we do have an underground storage tank. We do have a tank here. Mm -hmm. um, and we have an above ground storage tank at Silas Dean Middle School. Um, but again, we know of these things. We're working, we have an environmental engineer. We work with, with him. We are monitoring. We, this should be, this should be it. So the other two schools that are not on here don't have them? No, they do not have underground storage tanks. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? <clears throat> okay. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you, you very Sally. much for your time. Appreciate you coming tonight. Um, next is ordinances, resolutions, and appointments for introduction. We have two listed, but it's my understanding that we are going to take the um, Shade Tree Commission um, off of our list and not introduce that tonight. It's going to go back to uh, the commission for one more look at before it comes back to us in September. Is that right, Councillor? That's Ryan? right. Yes. Okay. So um, tonight we are only introducing... Uh, amending Chapter 10, Weathersfield Harbor Management Commission. Do you need a motion to remove that from the agenda? I don't believe so. Do we, Dolores? No. Okay. Um, moving on to minutes. Do I have a motion for the June 18th regular meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are there any um, additions or deletions or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Abstain. Okay, thank you, Councillor Latina. Um, we are back into public comment. Any members of this public wishing to speak for five minutes? Um, Barbara Rue, please come up. My name is Barbara Rue. I live at 79 Main Street. I don't get to council meetings that often. I have a lot going on. Um, my my observation removing the con consolidation of the human rights and relations committee and the advisory committee on public persons with disability i think the appropriate thing to do would have been to vote it down because if you take something off the agenda you can always put it back at least that's my understanding a motion to table is not debatable um i think that one of the things the council should consider with these consolidations is Take a look back at it in a year to see if it's worked. Because very often what happens, you make change for the sake of making change or you think it's going to be better, and it's not better. It's a disaster. And I'm thinking when you have that workshop meeting, you all better bring coffee because you're going to be here all night. Um, yes, it's a good idea. It's good for transparency to have committee meetings, but sometimes a lot of work gets done in committee meetings that you can't do at a full council meeting. So I really suggest you take a look at that once you've lived with it for a while. Um, I also find I was not very comfortable with amendments made at the meeting because our opportunity to comment on those amendments doesn't exist. And I think that's a problem. So if you're going to make some significant amendments to something before a meeting, in the process of a meeting, you may want to rethink how that is dealt with because the public can't comment, except at the end when it's too late. So with those comments, good night. Thank you. George, come on up, Mr. Rue. George, George A. Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. A couple of things also uh, that Barbara touched on. The changes that were made uh, is very difficult, and I'll be honest with you. If I had sat out there and understood it, I'll tell you, I don't. And I don't understand it for a number of reasons. A number of reasons is you mumble. You mumble terribly. 
It's almost as if you do this purposefully, like stand back here, blah, 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 blah. or if you turn, there's the mic, I'm talking to, what's her name, uh, Dolores over here. This is, it, it, it is really an aggravating kind of a point. I watch it at home on TV. My wife's got the thing blasting full tilt. She says, I can't hear a word. I can't understand it. I go on my computer. Maybe it's a little bit better on my computer. I see what's her name come up here and have to speak to some of you. Speak up. Damn it, speak up. I don't know what's so hard about that. But said, That's my venting. I gotta vent a little bit occasionally. But anyway, uh, compliments. Uh, the, the snow plow that Sally was describing. I've got this big sidewalk, starts at 956 Cloverdale Circle to the west, that's all torn up by that, the method that they use. I was very pleased to hear that you're getting that new machine, because it, it made a lot of common sense to me. Uh, the, uh, a thought that had been on my mind when I first saw a few weeks back uh, a committee was appointed to start looking for the new town manager, okay? I, I thought about it a lot, and uh, a concern that I have is as we look for a manager, and we've had, I think, pretty good managers mostly, okay? And personally, I didn't have any problems with Jeff myself, but whatever the reasons were, he's no longer here. I would strongly recommend that as you search for people, that you be a little bit selective in what part of the country these people come from. Okay? We live in New England. New England is a very different place than Alabama, or Georgia, or Mississippi, or Tennessee, or even Iowa. So as you start to look and find people, you want to make, sh I think, it's my counsel, I'm not telling you to do it, I'm sharing my thinking with you. Try to think in terms of what's, what would be most compatible here with ourselves. The, an, another quick item on the transparency, uh, I think uh, Mr. Spinella here, is it Spinella? Yeah, I got it right. Uh, was had some reservations about, you know, the, the ability of the community to participate. You, someone mentioned you're going to meet in that conference room back there, what, like, like when we have a budget hearing. Yes, Bob Young and I can sit back there and listen, but we can only listen. We can't share a thought. And transparency is a very, very difficult thing to, to sometimes understand. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't understand what we were talking about here. And I think Barbara's thought about, it. hey, try it out, but don't work, changed. Uh, you know, I have a sign at home that says change on purpose. So it says something to think, to think about there in this regard. So anyway, with that said, I, I do appreciate having had the opportunity to speak with and share thoughts with all my friends tonight. Have a good evening, Paul. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak tonight? Mr. Young. Sure is. Good evening again, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. I myself don't understand what happened tonight with that voting for the, the ordinance on, uh, what do you call it, A180. I don't understand because I couldn't understand either, and I wear hearing aids. And again, Mr. Forrest, you just mumble. You mumble and mumble. Tonight I heard the words about this workshop thing was going to give us transparency. You've got to be kidding. I've asked you how many times if you've gone and negotiated the contract with the Withersfield Historic Society and you sit there like a, a mummy and don't give me any answer. My suspicion is you did nothing. I haven't accused you, I don't think, of doing nothing yet, but I'm going to going forward. You've done nothing. You could have brought in $40,000, whatever that money is. You should have been bringing it in. Talk about transparency. It's zero as far as I'm concerned. And tonight, Tony Martino says, good idea to limit public comment. That's what you said, Tony. Yeah, that's what you said. I'm going to tell you that every meeting going forward. That's what you said. You believe in that. And that's how you think, Tony. And the rest of you have your own little niches. 
Oh, I'll be here. And you're going to hear from me going forward. And for the ability for the public to communicate at this workshop thing really doesn't make sense. And what really doesn't make sense is here we are. Last, week, last meeting a month ago, you talked about people aren't in town. So we're going to have a, a we're going to forfeit our meeting at the beginning of July, which you did, because nobody's in town. But the first meeting that you had in the midsummer, you popped this whole thing up on the, on the, on, on the public. And what did Mr. Hurley say tonight? <clears throat> this is the first time as a council that we were able to talk about this. Can you believe that? This important stuff that you talked about tonight, and some of these things were a disgrace. People, people weren't even aware that, it had, that they didn't hear from you. A disgrace. And you pulled this in the midsummer. When people are on vacation, you took your vacation last, at the last meeting, the 2nd of July, or first of whatever that date was, the first Monday of July, you took your vacation, and then you came back here with some real serious business, and very few people even showed up. Look what you got tonight. Four of us are here with the attorney left. You're not going to bring in more people into government with what you just pulled tonight. And again, I got to read the minutes. I know Mr. Spinella made some comment that I couldn't understand, but I want to read what he said. And I think he's along with what I was saying. I think. I'm not sure. I do know that you really pulled a boner tonight. And you all voted, and I don't understand what we have for a finished product. That's how bad you communicate. You got it? Mr. Rue has told you how bad you've communicated. And Tony Martino, he believes good ideas uh, to limit public comment. You're going to hear that every meeting that I come to, Tony. Because that's exactly what you believe in. I heard you and you've said it before. I'm furious with you folks. But I'm coming back. And I'm going to, and I'll be talking about Mr. Forrest as much as I can because he has really pulled some bad votes over the years. And I did say that we did lose at a certain point, and I don't remember how many years back it was. We lost one of our opportunities to talk. And I don't remember who was on there. Maybe you were, Mr. Forrest. You're, you're good for stuff like that, but maybe you weren't. But we did lose it, and we got it back, the second portion of public comment, only because the Democrats got voted out. Maybe it'll happen again. Uh, I appreciate coming down here and talking to you, Mayor. I hope someday you'll tell me if you went and negotiated with the Weathersfield Historic Society and got that $43,000 for us. We really need it badly. Badly. Good night. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Okay, seeing none. Do I have a motion to move into executive session? So moved. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, any opposed? Any abstaining? Motion passes. We are moving into executive session. Thank you and good night.